my goal and the reason I wanted you two to meet each other was I love men and I'm constantly searching and finding real men like men. And you two are some real men. I just want to sit back and witness, watch you two have a conversation with each other. That's great. That's great. My excitement for you two meeting is the fact that you two are really, really awesome men doing really, really cool things in the world. I think you should know each other. And I think that those of us like myself who are constantly looking for really great men, I want to know what are you doing in your, with your time? What are you putting in your mouth? Mm -hmm. and and what is your practice so that other people can start following you you know and like thought like because it comes down to like what you're putting in your mouth what you're putting in your mind and how you're spending your time and if we're gonna if i can also add what we're standing for yes because i believe that doing is one thing okay people can occupy their time but i, I feel that what's missing for men among other things is who they're being who they're yes. being and what they're standing for. And they're, I, I believe that there's a massive miss, a massive spin out of, of guys yes. just failing to stand for truth, most importantly of all, and for our women and for our kids and for our values and for our integrity. And it's like, you know, passing that piece, if we're having a man's conversation for me is, you know, would be, would be to leave something important out. I mean, it's time for our men to, to step the heck up. Yes. So I would love like you to introduce each other to you. Like, so, Hey, I'm introducing y'all. Hey, here's <laughs> Sean, Michael, how are you? Like y'all talk, have fun. So, to, just to expand on that just a little bit. I, I think that it's important to note that the truth is not nice and that uh, far too many people are trying to be nice to everyone because, but the truth isn't nice. And the more that you don't speak the truth to yourself and to those around you, the weaker you become. Literally speaking the truth makes you stronger. So, yeah, I think that's a really important thing to touch on there. Uh, what are you standing for? But for just a little introduction, I have a couple webs or a couple businesses websites. The one in Nashville.com, Loot.Life, and Music City eBikes. I'm all about speaking the truth and not just not as concerned with being nice. <laughs> really not, brother. Yep. I don't know. I, I think over the years, I've just become very comfortable in the uncomfortable. And I can definitely point at uh, my yoga practice as being part of that. You know, when you're in a 105 degree room for an hour and a half, working out, you know, seven days a week, you become comfortable in the uncomfortable. So I don't mind if somebody is you know, irritated with what I'm saying to them, or I don't mind ruffling the feathers of the entire room if it needs to happen. I'm okay with that. Sean is a, is a mastermind chef in co supplemental concoctions. Like he's the one who made loot. It got me off of all pharma. I'm not on any pharma anymore because of this guy. I was just telling him for the, since listening to his advice, my lymph nodes for the first time, maybe in my whole life are like not puffy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like actually like hel getting healthy. I, I look really great at 50 and I have a lot of great stamina. I give him credit because I'm listening to his advice. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's engineered his life to have more fun and be helping people with what he's making. So I mm -hmm. just, it's, and he gets people off of benzos and alcohol and gets them riding around bikes in, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So hi, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, Michael, I met and I'm like, he's doing so many things in the spiritual world and also bringing awareness to sex trafficking as a man that I just have mad respect for. I'll let you take it, Michael. Like, who are you, Michael? Introduce yourself to Sean. I have had a really, I've lived a lot of lifetimes, the cat nine lives sort of thing. Um, just by circumstance, uh, I've uh, kind of been open to life that, and pursuing what I eventually saw as, um, I first thought as being supernatural I'm just pushing the envelope because I can, because of course, let's, let's go and live in, oh, I'll live in Italy or I'll go work in Shanghai or I'll share, I'll run with the bulls or, you know, uh, oh yeah, martial arts, let's do it. You know, I, I would just jump in because I could. And also probably I found out later because I was driven by some, some conscious writing on the wall, so to speak, that was, that was moving me. I didn't quite realize until I really started diving into the subconscious world. We can get into that but definitely driven to become 
super strong and, and impenetrable, so to speak. And then also that, that same drive has helped me assist others who are in positions where they had excessive vulnerabilities to no fault of their own and to be able to assist in providing a bridge for them to project their amazing voices, their wisdom, their strength and their beauty, especially coming from some of the darkest places that we consider most people are kind of don't even know about if they do, they're kind of like, Ooh, what, what's that? Um, from, you know, deep inner, inner, inner city gun violence and, and to, um, people come out of sex trafficking and human trafficking. So, uh, I just driven to serve. I'm a man of service. I'm a man of God. I'm a man who is here to do my mission and do it with greater and greater levels of, of love and peace and joy. And also, uh, and I say love, I mean the big divine love, not the hippy dippy Cupid Valentine's day, um, uh, disgusting stuff that they've put on us as commercial love, but, and you spit out kind of like those little dry powder candies is like, this doesn't deserve to be even a candy. Right. But, um, the, the real divine stuff. And I talk about truth. I'm looking at divine truth or cosmic truth. It's the truth of all. And as was just said, when we're speaking from a place of authenticity, I just recently saw a, a study that said that it's, it's something on the order of the, the or, auric field increases something on the order of um, thousands of times, I think it said 5,000, uh, compared to speaking love. So when you're speaking authenticity and truth, and that's not my truth, oh, my truth is this, or the truth about this issue, this is what's really going on. I mean, as I think we're talking about, truth, the divine truth, the actual pure essence, which is what we are. And in the scriptures, it says God is truth. And when we are speaking from that place without beyond any place of worry, of judgment, um, of um, opinions, of what, who we're going to be offending, and we do in that, in that space, man, I mean, just ripples of energy are coming off of us. And I've heard kind of like the walls of Jericho, it's just like things just, boom, that's how I visualize it. When you speak truth, things just fall down out of the way because that's how pure uh, and powerful that vibration is. So yeah, I, I dedicate myself to assist to use this amazing, these amazing years of uh, development and teaching and sharing. And I took many years in the yogic path as well um, to, to something truncated and finite that I can assist people in a short amount of time, radically, radically get over their stuff, shift their lives and empower the lives of others. Now, whether that be through my session work primarily and the company that I uh, help run and as well as my filmmaking, it's, I'm here to, I'm here in service. And, 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 it's, and it's serving and also expanding in, through the service to, um, to, to become an ever more powerful being um, for, for God. Hell yeah. Actually, that's why Sean's whole site is called The One in Nashville is because of the one consciousness, one love, one. And plus, yeah. it looks like Jesus. I mean, let's just point yeah. it out. Let's just, I mean, let's talk about the elephant in the room. It is, it is because of the one consciousness. When you're in a flow state speaking the truth, I believe that you're tapping into the one consciousness. But I'm interested in what you were saying about subconscious, I forget exactly the way you put it, but uh, subconscious, tapping into the subconscious, is that, is that what you said? What, what is it that you're doing with that? Because that's yeah. very so important. The subconscious uh, mind, some might categorize the mind if we can really say that there's a mind at all, right? But I will say the way that we're taking in and holding information, re repeating information, um, we can do that from our conscious mind. That's our awakened mind. Like we're talking through through our conscious mind's intention. We're we're, we're new to each other, so we're like we're we're really we're listening. Like, hey, hey, who, what's going on here? And like, what would I like to say? And how, what's really being uh, shared here? But mo most of the time, that's we're operating awake, as in awake in the hours of the day but we're running on code. I like to use the, the comparison with the computer because our, our code is all in the subconscious mind. Because if you had to constantly think like we're looking now, okay, is my camera, okay, am I saying that and all that? If you had to do that for every task that you repeatedly done from brushing your teeth to cooking, to driving, to you know conversing, to writing emails, it would be exhausting. You wouldn't get very far. So your subconscious has taken these routines and made them base code for your system. Now, as you progress in years, 
uh, by the mid thirties, then you have only 95% of the time, the subconscious is running the show. It's running it through all of these because you've learned so many things you don't you're doing so many things. And so people think they're awake and they're fully present and making their own choices. But the reality is they already coded themselves. So how that shows up is yes, the benefit of being able to simply get on a bike and go and not think about, am I balancing and, you know, and figuring out where am I going? Or just go and you're going to go to wherever that you love to go, your store, your hangout versus, um, and also at the same time, how you respond to stimuli, how you, res how you think about or have an opinion about certain thing in the world. So if you ever got triggered, people think uh, that's just part of them, but that's just a code getting like activated. And so people who have yet to do, um, you know, a lot of work on that, then have more triggers, but they have more things going on or more opinions that are locked in like, no, this is the way this party, this political party stands for this. And this is what's really going on uh, in my family and my mother's like this. And it's these things that they've already made a choice about and it's been programmed. And now it's instinctively responding like the instinctive bike, but it also ends up not serving us because now I've, I have greater state of agitation or anger about something where I'm not able to see the beauty of a situation, which is I'm seeing it as a burden instead of a blessing because I'm locked into a certain set of thinking that until I go in there and touch that, and then what I do is help people find the exact thing that's preventing them from getting where they would like to be with their abundance, with their health, with their family, with their relationships, which is they think it's just them thinking and things not working out, but it's really their code simply producing responses to stimuli and to what's going on in the world that they can actually change. So you change that, you change your base code and suddenly you're doing wheelies right on the bike and you can do wheelies in life and you could jumps in life. But people think that this is it. When we, when we get into this, it's you can recode yourself for, you know, beautiful, peaceful, supernatural, abundant life. So you both are do have done yoga, right? So that is such a consistent thing, by the way. All the great, great men I've met, because I'm definitely on a search of, of interviewing them. Every single one of y'all is doing yoga, and you're eating meat. Are you eat, do you eat meat, Michael? No. You're not. You're one of them. Just kidding. <laughs> I actually studied nutrition for uh, a while. My first love was was in the healthcare space. I did training, trained people, nutrition and all that. So I um, have studied and applied many, many types of the popular and less popular food regimens from East and West. And now I eat intuitively. I eat in a way that um, I go with what serves me in the moment. I believe that nutritional approaches can vary depending on where we are what the body requires, the situation that we're in, and the level of um, ease we'd like to have in the body. Different things, it depends what your priorities are. So I've exp I've done many things and I've shared many things. I just go with today what, what I use check in, like, okay, where are we going? And right now it's, um, yeah, I've, it's been a little while since I had meat, but I have people choose to have meat. That's great too. Yeah, no, Sean's definitely I've a carnivore. I've experimented with going vegan and as well as study nutrition and, and all of that. And um, yeah, it's if you are well studied, well studied and understand nutrition, you can you can do vegan successfully. It's just a lot harder, I think. You know, there's a lot of traditional dishes that will get you everything that you need being a vegan, but um, the majority of people can't handle it because they don't have the information on how to do it correctly. Um, yeah, they're but, eating pizza uh, with no meat on it. No, it's not, that's vegan. It's not Scott. It's gummy bears. <laughs> I, I think that when I was doing that, you know, you feel great for a while, and then over time it kind of runs you down. And I always make a mention to anyone who tells me that they're not uh, eating meat is uh, get some liver. Eat some liver for a few weeks. Just try and do A to B. Which way do you feel better on the most nutrient dense meat in existence, which is ruminant liver. Uh, mo one of the most nutrient dense foods in existence, which is ruminant liver, you know, bison, cow, deer, anything that eats grass and see how you feel. So anyway, I challenge you to do two weeks of liver and then get back to me on uh, if uh, vegan is the way to go. But the other thing that I'm interested in is that subconscious programming editing, because 
I feel when I'm walking through life, the majority of people that I bump into just have triggers everywhere. Like you can't you can't get anywhere with them because you're you're constantly hitting a chord that then puts them unconscious and then they're you know upset and then the conversation degrades. And being somebody that that you know is comfortable with the truth not being nice, obviously I run into that a lot. So I'm just curious how you um, if, if if that is something that you can go into uh, as far as how you help those people. Like what's yeah, the process? Oh yeah, sure. Do well, it. I have I had awareness of a, a rudimentary awareness through my through my years in yoga. I had some great teachers, um, and they would talk about um, you know things limiting programs or subconscious thought forms in the body. It wasn't. It was only when I actually. And I, a lot of those just changed just because I was improving my vibration. And I do believe through the thousands of hours of meditation and other dedications that I had that that a lot of these things, um, a lot of the, and it would seem more like energetic blockages and views and filters and things like that, strongholds that were just went away on their own. It would, there wasn't any control about that. And I didn't really have a fun way to do that. So working, you know, st first as a student in the work that I that I do now before becoming a partner. It's called the quantum leap technique. And doing it again and again, like being able to go in, we first be able to point it out. So if I'm, and I do this now in myself, so I can utilize words, phrases as a whole different, this is my book that's coming out next year is gonna be about the, uh, all, a lot of words and common patterns that we speak in casually in America and beyond. I've lived in other countries and speak other languages too. And these things are actually um, easy to pick up and see what's going on in the subconscious, like the Freudian slip. You're like, oh, it's a Freudian slip. Freudian slip's happening all day long. I can hear it immediately. People won't have any idea about it. And then I can use that to, with a few questions to pinpoint what's really going on that's holding them back and they have no idea about. Also body, the body language, the movement, but also the conditions of the body, illness, injury, scratches, nausea, headaches, whatever condition as well that the, the Western science, allopathic science, it's this, like it's just a condition. I can read that and help somebody uh, locate exactly what's at the root of the root of that situation and then change it. And then we also have another technique I use with eyes when I'm present with somebody, I can do a special photograph with this camera that we have. But ultimately, I'm just checking in on my own and why we're using that with other people and some other techniques. Those are the more, more fun ones that we teach in our, in our work. And I able to find like, what is me? I say me, my divine self, my true self, my higher self. And then what is something else? And until, until you do that enough times, it's like, it's, it seems like it's all together. It's a mishmash. Right. Um, but if, when I do it, when I'm able to lock down exactly, and I'll it's, I'm using somebody else. I'm hearing what they're saying and seeing what they're doing. And I can tell you, well, your body's telling the truth. Again, you're sub, you're, I'm hearing the truth and, and they're like, no, no, no. And they watch themselves on a recording. So we always record all the sessions and they're like, oh, I was saying that I was doing that. And so you do it enough times and you begin to be able to see what is me or what is something else. Another easy way to just to describe that is kind of like the Abraham Hicks vortex situation. If you've looked into that, or heard any of, of Esther Hicks speaking is saying like, what's the vortex, this peace and love space and what's something else. Now we get really good at pinpointing that for ourselves. And then I can just tell it's, if I, it's, it's developing the awareness that, and shortening the distance between when it's, when it comes up and when I say it or when I feel it. So no one is free from anything, but if I, if I can, someone can be triggered for a while. We'll say like, okay, someone you upset. Something, yeah, give me an example. Take us like, through an uh, example. Okay. You have a, you had a, you were supposed to have, um, a meeting with somebody and then they you, you're 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 all ready to go and stuff and then they don't you know it's been a few days you planned it days ago and then you're texting and they're like nowhere to be found right and you're like what's going on and then if it was important you know maybe you get a little agitated a little pissed off you know like whatever and you might carry that around for however many hours right some people might carry it on less or more if it matters. You know, maybe it's just some, this is your good friend and now they've done it 10th time. You're like, what's the deal with these people? And, uh, or your partner. And then now it's been two days. You're like, what's your deal? You know, and now you're carrying it around. But really, 
that's just your that's just your response to that situation. You feel a victim, pissed off because somebody aired, you know, antagonized you, right? But that's not you. A baby doesn't get pissed off because it doesn't get a text back or a kid, you know, that's like, whoop, whatever, <laughs> next toy, you know, food, let's run around, who cares? But as a, where, where did that come from? Well, we gained, a, at one point you gained a program or like a line of code that says, you know, if somebody does this, they're, it's wrong, it's wrong. So being able to then identify faster and faster, oh, that's just my, my way of making up that that's a wrong thing and that's bad for me. You know, or they're, they're screwing up. And then, oh, that's, I get to choose how I feel. Well, I'm, I'm gonna get triggered because someone didn't email me and I'm gonna, or, or respond to my text and I'm gonna carry that all afternoon. That's, that's just an assault on myself, they don't care. So being able to actually find that what that is and quickly distinguish it. And then what we do uniquely here, this before I did a little bit of that, but what we do here is like find the blessing. So I'll give you a further example on the text message thing. So let's just say, that you're like planning for this big event and you're this big dinner this cool party they don't respond you're like what is the deal man no piss and stomping okay i could have been doing this could have been doing that no i could have been on my own and but then i started thinking well, what if this is a blessing what if them not responding is actually more aligned with my path and them responding and me going to such and such event and actually sit with this idea and then when i was able to allow that to happen then i recognized oh my gosh every time it was a blessing and as soon as the blessing, as soon as I recognized that, and then something else would occur, uh, somebody else would, would contact me. I remember something that I really was putting off for a while. And then I would do that. I would commit to the next thing. Boom. Text messages would come through. So, but wouldn't you say that if at the base of all of that, rather than going through, and those are great, that, that works, but rather than being in judgment and just shifting from being in judgment to curiosity would have avoided all of that processing. Mm -hmm. So rather than, okay, this is the 10th time somebody didn't show up for a meeting, it's a good friend, rather than being judgmental about it and then getting angry or frustrated or insert whatever emotion there, you're curious and instead, you know, reach out or, or send a note saying, you know, I hope everything's well, you know, I'm here to talk, I'm, I'm curious what's going on. It's just, I, I just think it's a, a core component of things that I do are trying um, to remove the judgment program from my subconscious and replace it with curiosity. Because if you do that fundamentally, then you avoid that whole train that, that, that works that, that you just went down, um, then you're not triggered at all because you're in curiosity. Yeah, love that. Huge. That's a great way to approach it. And then the my question to you is, so how far do you take that? So let's say um, they didn't respond or they didn't show up and then you're you're reaching out and they don't they don't respond. Yeah, you know, that's mm -hmm. you know, I'm still then curious. Mm -hmm. I'm curious on what, you know, you know, I might get into a little bit of self-evaluation. Did I do anything that um, is against my beliefs, my truth to irk them? And then if I go through and I'm like, okay, I could see how that could be irked, but that's still in coherence with my truth. So I can't be concerned with how they're feeling over this because my truth was involved with it. Or um, if I'm like, you know what, I can be a little bit of a hammer I can be a little bit more intentional than most and people don't have that same and that same fire that I do for a lot of things and I may have pushed them a little bit too hard then I can you know come at them and with with a little bit different angle and maybe revive that conversation or that relationship or just be curious a person that would consistently not show up what could be the cause of that Maybe they lack self-love, they lack self-discipline. And then what nugget can I send their way through whatever medium of communication I have left um, that could nudge them in a way that would be helpful to them over the situation. But I think that the basis of it though is getting out of judgment as much as possible and into curiosity as much as possible because then you're less in analytical, 
and you're more in the one consciousness, which is a much bigger processor than your analytical processor. Your analytical processor is what we've got for electricity capability in our structure, right? But, but when we're out of the analytical, then we have the one consciousness for our processing power. This is why Einstein, when he had a difficult problem to solve, he would fall asleep with ball bearings in his hand, thinking analytically about the problem in the hopes that it would be handed over to his subconscious as soon as he would fall asleep. And then when he would hit full relaxation, he'd drop the ball bearings, and then he'd wake up with the answer. Ha! So it's about staying in the one consciousness as much as you can and choosing tools that you operate in life with, such as curiosity instead of judgment. Um, and that's, come that's, in, uh, and how did you word it, Michael? Seeing if what's what's you, you, and then what's yeah, so the, something my else. My favorite part, or the part I use like, the most of of what he was sharing, is that um, the part when when you said about what in me is going on. So that's the word I, I used to have a bit more interest in what was happening in them, and then I realized, well, we are one. So they are actually just reflecting me or giving me exactly what I require in that moment. So now I'll say, okay, what in me would produce this situation? Them uh, not showing up, them having this particular, it's, it's Ill, sometimes easier when someone has an aggressive or some sort of really poignant response, because that's you. People like to want to put the blame, blame. Oh, this person didn't show up. This person reacted this way. This person dropped the ball. No. <laughs> Yes, physically, we could say that that's the uh, what you could observe. But that's not the truth. The truth is something they're reflecting you. You're connected. They're reflecting that you're doing you a favor. The <laughs> question is, what is that? So I take that my curiosity, especially with the inside and say, well, what, what is going on here? What what in me would it produce a situation? What am I? Is it that I am learning to express my boundaries? Is it that I'm learning to transmute judgment? Is it is it that this person really isn't great for me. <laughs> is it that maybe this project really is, is I'm getting twi twisted up in something, but it's, it's away from my divine mission is, or maybe it's impeding on my values, or maybe I just ought to be over here. So I think my introspection and the questions go inside and then trust that that's working. It's a law and that what, what is, what is the truth will arrive inside myself that truth and then the next the next step that's in alignment will will arrive and um it's a way to play with life that i love huh, that's the, a nice way to put it question though don't don't you think that being that we are all one consciousness but we all have different subconscious programming some of us more indoctrinated than others and that we could be bumping into beings that um have not sorted through as much stuff, but we can relate to them, meaning, oh, I was there 20 years ago. I know exactly what that's like. So you can instead have a boundary and you don't have to be like, oh, what is it in me that is garnering this response? You can just come to it with an understanding of, oh, I see exactly where they're at. I was there. I would have liked someone to be compassionate with me when I was there. So I'm going to be compassionate with them. And here's the best incognito pearl of wisdom that I can send their way to maybe nudge them along to get past, <clears throat> to get past that, that hiccup, that, that trigger that they have that's removing them from um, peace and you know the, the big love love, not the candy heart love. So, hey, I got one. I got one that's important, I think, is that both of you meditate. And I'm curious what that practice is and what you actually do, specifically because I talk with a lot of men, men, like working men, construction men. Men are like, what the hell? What do you mean meditate? I ain't wearing yoga. But yet they want to be more connected. And they because of the perception of meditating seems weak to them and here you both are really strong awesome men and i want to bring up the conversation like y'all are meditating and you're not the only ones i've been doing this for years finding y'all and 
you're eating differently than others. You're meditating and it's how you're spending your time. That's why I was like, so I would love to know what that practice actually literally is. Like, what do you do? What's your mantra? Do you sit? Do you walk? Do you, you know, I do walking meditations. So, so does, so does Sean. It's like, I'm, I'm curious what that practice is. And it's, and, and to point out that it's, it is manly, you know what I mean? That whole stigma, you know what I mean? Well, all right, I'll go first. I think how I first started meditating was when I look back at it was, um, motorcycling actually. Like I didn't understand the concept of meditation. I wasn't interested in it, but I knew that if I got on a motorcycle, the hum of the engine, the, the pitch changes of the sound of the engine, um, just inadvertently after an hour or two of riding a motorcycle, you know, I would no longer be in um, narrative mode. I think that we're programmed growing up to be in narrative mode where there's a constant chatter in our heads and we believe that we are the chatter, where in actuality we are the area in between the chatter. That's who we actually are. So. You know, after a few hours of riding a motorcycle, I would, you know, the, all the internal chatter would be gone and it would just be um, the tones of the motorcycle. Well, that happens to be very close to transcendental meditation, if any of y'all have ever done transcendental yep. meditation. Also, e it's, it's, EMDR mantra, too. it's mantra meditation, so it's when words, your transcendental word that they give you becomes tones in your head, so you no longer have any voices in your head, you just have the tones of the words that you're doing over and over again. So, um, you know, motorcycle less as things got busier, shifted over to uh, electric bicycles. And then I noticed, and it wasn't intentional, but it was, I just really enjoyed doing it. And then I noticed, well, it was the roar of the tires on the asphalt. After a while, you know, I would you know, figure out, oh, okay, that empties my, my mind. And then it was like, you know, when stress levels change or when triggers changed, I was like, um, sometimes I don't have time to take a three hour bicycle ride. I would like to be able to do this faster, right? So I got a, uh, you know, started doing some meditations um, wasn't sure how successful I was at it. I know I wasn't, it wasn't as good as doing a three hour bike ride. I knew that. So I, I got one of those Muse. Have any of y'all heard of a Muse? It's a meditation monitoring device. So it monitors your brain waves. And then um, hmm. I started off 15 minutes a day. I got up to an hour a day consistently. I was doing an hour a day. And um, sometimes in one chunk, sometimes in two, rarely three or four just to get in my hour and um, I had data then and then so not only I could tell when I would get into a meditative state because I would feel better but then I also had the data to confirm that I was in fact doing it right uh, and you can record your brain waves you know your theta your gamma all of those different waves yeah so that really trained me to be able to get into true meditation fast you know looking at the data, knowing the feeling. And uh, one interesting thing about that is that it, and if you use the feedback, the automatic feedback on the Muse, one of the, sec one of the settings is birds chirping. When, it, when, the, when your brain waves are in the proper place indicating that you're meditating, birds would chirp. So now anytime I hear birds chirping, that is really easy for me to get into a meditative state when birds are chirping. <laughs> um, so that, you know, it's amazing, you know, what training can do for you. I think now when I, I can tell when I need to meditate more and then what I'll do is the first thing when I wake up in the morning, I'll do the meditations, which is for me, I practice Vipassana. I don't know if that's pronounced right. Maybe you're familiar with that where it's breath control. And that really got hammered into me when I was doing a lot of Bikram yoga and then I Yingar yoga. Because to me, yoga is all about how much air I can inhale while doing these moves, right? Or how much I can exhale in other moves. So it all comes back to the breath. And, you know, the lungs are the support system for the heart. So 
anytime you're in excitement or in a stressed situation, if you think of that, then you know the, the lungs inflating with air kind of lift up and support the heart. So you know that can be a, a nice meditation. So I think now I do, I, I think the key is, is to get into those meditative states at all times. And how I can do that is just by always, not always being observant of the breath, constantly trying to slow down my breath, always. It's, you know, a lot of people do that Tumo breath, you know, the Wim Hof style where it's super fast. I think the key is to slowing it down to figuring out how to fill up your breath container at the slowest rate possible. So you might be taking, you know, when you first start doing this practice, maybe four seconds, eight seconds would be a lot. But now it's not really uncommon, you know, I, I, don't, I don't time it on a regular basis, but I think, you know, a minute in, a minute out, you know, when you really slow it down, you also improve your CO2 tolerance and uh, you improve your trigger tolerance your nervous system tolerance is higher, so you can stay more present at all times. So I, can, I, I try to do, my goal is to constantly be in a walking meditation, which is a term that I heard from Joe Dispanza. When you said supernatural, Michael, the first thing that popped into my mind was Joe, you know, Becoming Supernatural, that series of books, which are fantastic, which I have on my list to read again. I, they're so nutrient dense, I believe. That's a that's a great great way to put it too, and also like to the for example like truckers. I've talked to a lot of truckers. That would be a great y'all listen up, because as you're driving, you're also like when you just said the the bicycle and the motorcycles, you're actually inadvertently doing EMDR, because your eyeballs are moving to the side, you're squeezing, you're actually doing EMDR and not even realize. So if you're driving, and you could just slow your breath down like you did, you're meditating. Right. And Look then the, at it. Yeah, the bicycles and the motorcycles, EMDR also includes eye movement. Yeah. Where you have to look, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the reason why that works is because whatever you're going through, you're looking left, right, left, right, up, down, up, down. The body and the being considers that, oh, we're moving forward. We're looking for the solutions. We're looking for what we need to fix how we feel. So moving those eyes, whether it's a bicycle or motorcycle, and then replacing the chatter in your head with the sound of the engine or the tires or whatever, that kind of goes over into transcendental world. So, and I know a lot of people, I, when I talk to people that ride motorcycles, and they, they haven't realized that they're getting into a meditative state, but when they talk about how much they love it, I'm just like, oh, I get it. Yeah, keep riding, man. That's your medicine right there. Your medicine is riding. Of course, the key is is that they don't turn it into stress, which a lot of them do. You know, they become doing wheelies or start doing extreme things on a motorcycle. They're they're feeding their their desire to be in a constant triggered space because when triggered, you don't feel your feelings. So they're essentially running away from their feelings. So motorcycling doesn't work if that's how they're motorcycling, but. The ones that talk about, I just get out of cruise. That's their meditation. Mm -hmm. So what's your practice, Michael? Well, I have had the blessing of doing many types of meditation. I took the Kundalini yoga path above others and I became a teacher. I meditated for four years straight every single day, a specific meditation that is said to be the most powerful one in, in the yoga world. Of course, a lot of people and they're not in many spaces think theirs is the best so we'll uh, reserve that for you know for anyone else but i've done vipassana as well for me the the key the thing is this in kundalini there are thousands of meditations and they're very precise so i went from being meditative like something can be a meditative action and doing some different types of stuff to actually these like a recipe they all are, are they they are for something specific so in the instructions it will say this is specifically for stress this is specifically for the gallbladder this is specifically to create abundance for yourself so as a teacher i would use them as medicine so to, and say okay this is what's going on in your life do this meditation that's how we would use it you required this meditation for 40 days uh or however whatever you felt inclined to give so 
But I would say for the trucker, for our trucker bros and for everybody who's just starting out is, is to get away from any idea of doing it right. Yeah. It has to be a certain thing and just look out. Stay for out judgment. Just, just sit in a What'd you say, bench. Sean? What'd you say? Sean? Yeah. Stay out of judgment because right. being in judgment or, or considering if you're doing it right, that'll immediately take you out of it. So yes, exactly. Michael. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The amazing benefit of simply like Sean was saying to put a lot of the thinking, the thinking brain to, to go into first gear and just connect with your surroundings, what you're seeing, what you're feeling in your hands, what you're, the breeze you might be feeling and just allow yourself to be. And if you can do that for even one minute and you can build it to much more, if you choose, it's, it's a medicine, it's a, it's a tool to be used. And like I was mentioning about food earlier, I use the tool differently depending on what I require in that moment or what serves me at that time, that day, that time and place. So there are so many tools. I found Kundalini extremely helpful because it gave me some things. So we have like what they call a mudra. You know, you put your hand in a specific position or you're touching a certain part of yourself, or it could be um, breath, some a specific breath. And we have long, there's long breaths and there's really short breaths and there's breaths in between. There would be mantras that would be set inside there, mantras that we set out loud. You could do it with certain types of music you could be doing in silence and it's all prescribed specifics. That really helped me to dial into it. Ultimately, it's, I like what Sean said about walking like that all day. Can you make your life a meditation? And that is simply the essence uh, for me of being able to be in contact where you are and allow the thinking brain to be on the side and just be present with whatever's going on and silent and quiet. You can even look at it as a, a silent prayer. It, it can be uh, a simple way to live and that you, as you are a simple way to do something or to be some, to be who you really are in quiet. And then you can stitch that together. You can, med you can be in a meditative state while you're washing the dishes while you're while you're mopping the floor some light activity that has that requires zero thinking then can also facilitate you moving into that space and the more we can do that the more we can be in with our present our present selves our, our actual selves and beyond looking for any specific one that's that's that has to be this way or has to be this way just just be just look out a window and allow your give yourself the time to do that and maybe put on a timer if that helps you so you're not thinking about how long you've been sitting there <laughs> and enjoy it mostly because ultimately like one of my teachers said you know i would at the peak of my yoga time our teachers would say 10 percent of your day 10 percent of your day requires to be this spiritual work now that's no, not right reading spiritual books it's actual true full body participation that could be full body in prayer and meditation as much as it actually could be yoga postures but and so i was doing that minimum two and a half hours a day and uh, but he ultimately said, look, if you're not enjoying it, stop doing it because you're making it, you're actually creating this taste for it yourself. And you're forcing yourself. So also also be in harmony with it. And if it starts to feel like, you know, uh, OK, I'm, I, this isn't fun anymore, then leave. But then and then get get grow the discernment to say, when is that the trigger? When is that like something else inside of me that doesn't want to go that will re that will leave my space when I when I'm in my peace versus you know, now it's just now I've been sitting on this, this bike or this seat and my butt hurts. It's been, you know, hours and I'm just going to get up. Right. So developing that discernment on the inside, which is facilitated by, by going within There's there's no way to go with one other thing that people are listening to, whatever your space of life, you know, as one of the things it says, go within or go without, <laughs> or as the gospel of Thomas says, uh, the one of the Gnostic gospels, gospels, it says, um, if you, what, if you go in, what will, what will go in excuse me if you if you go within what is within will save you if you do not go within what is within will destroy you interesting so the <laughs> idea is that there's not like there's no oh, i don't have time to, to i'm not going to look inside of me or do inner work or meditate or whatever you're you're simply your self-sabotage you know whatever that voice is, is saying you not to do it is actually something different than you and it's like it's something to explore because ultimately it's our inside we are projecting this great reality from our inside and so don't work on the inside and you're just carrying around all the baggage of yourself and your ancestors and all that instead of saying okay wait a minute 
I can, my life can be better. My life can be much more abundant. We have people come to do our work in their seventies that are still working and some have retired. And they're just like, there's gotta be more than this. They've achieved a lot. They've earned a lot. They've had the relationship for many years, but it's, you know, there's, they're in, in my opinion, they're in the first gear or then the first act of their life. They didn't really, and they're fine. Like have some time, like I'm going to use, I'm going to jump into this and they're sh radically shifting their lives, even in their seventies. And so, you know, I've seen you can it. do that too. When you go within, find something it. that resonates with you and just make a move. I love it. Well, I have a question for both of you that as far as your, how you're spending your time, I can't imagine that either one of you is just sitting around watching TV. <laughs> Before that, I just want to mention a couple things because there, there's some great info for the truckers and what you just said. Oh, do uh, it. Well, I also um, used to do Kundalini yoga. I think it's fantastic. I think one of the things, you know, you made a reference of doing the dishes, right? Well, if you do the dishes with a wrinkled face, holding tension and scrubbing those dishes with anger, retenting your breath, you know, you're, you're not exploring your inside world right where if you are exploring your inside world with elongating your breaths one you know you said to just look out the window right well something that you can do to put yourself in curiosity at any time is to just think about what the air feels like passing into your nose as you're doing the the pasana or you know just doing the dishes you know just the feeling of the air coming through that can can get you in and and be cognizant of, you know, if you're, you know, bashing the dishes together. Alan Watts has a, has a great thing. You know, you can be a bus driver that's at war with traffic, right? <laughs> and, and be, you know, shaking your fist and beeping the horn at everybody. Or you can be a bus driver that loves his job and looks at it as like a, a creative flow of, flowing through and around the traffic and maintaining a smooth flow, not getting angry at the traffic, just reacting and, and, and making it a dance, essentially. And, you know, so you could choose to do a dance when you're doing the dishes, still get it done in the same amount of time, but instead of, I gotta do the damn dishes. You're, you know, you're doing it in a relaxed state. Coming from a fe the the female over here, I got I got the super female energy, and I and I love cleaning and and doing the dishes and cooking and all that. And I always do that. Like I, I it is my it is my meditative practice is like to do the floors or to clean, right. and I put myself into meditative. Another thing that helps me a lot is I have a kid, so I have a very young. She's nine, and she's smarter than all all of us. Oh my God, this kid. And, but she instills in me playtime. Playtime does it, like sitting on the floor and coloring. As much as I, it took me a while, not too much, because I mean, she, I, I do what she says. Uh, to understand that it's like a catch 22. Wait, I can't, I gotta work, I can't play. And I realized that through her teaching me that actually I work better when I play. And then the make play. work as playful as possible too. Yeah. And then the play exactly s s switches into my work. And then in the play is also meditative. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have an aerial dancing rig in my living room for my kid. And, and it's like the play is, I mean, we were, we did paintings last night and you know, she, she tells me <laughs> where to put more orange or whatever, but it's, um, that to me is a meditative state too. Cause it's, it's, it's constantly being present not being like, ah, go out of my face, you know, which brings me back to another question I have for the two of you, as far as time and what you're doing with your time. Cause that's what I'm interested in. Like what you're ingesting into yourself, what you're putting into your mind and how you're spending your time. And then also I want to, what you're standing for, but it's like time. I can't imagine that either one of you sit around and just watch TV. Am I right? <laughs> That would be correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So like, I yeah. do watch probably more um, than I would norm. I would watch it if I was, if I hadn't been interested in filmmaking. So I, mm. I, um, I trained and worked in front of the camera, behind the camera, and loved to bring forth stories that now are exclusively ones of a big truth, like big hard truth, 
like Sean was saying, well, it's got it. It's going to come out and you're going to think whatever you're going to think and you're reacting with, you're going to react. I'm going to tell it to you. And I'll tell it with love. I'm going to usually through somebody else, the character or the person that I've been interviewing and then transformation. Let me show you what this is, what this is going on. So when I'm, a, when someone's asking about a project, then, you know, give a consulting on it, or if I'm looking at something myself, I'll go and watch a bunch of stuff. So it's a kind of a tool, but to watch for entertainment purposes, I mean, how many hours are people, I mean, now it's just too much time in front of the screen because just from other work, that's like the idea of sitting in front of the screen some more and then adjusting all that stuff that's coming through the TV. It's different oh, than your yeah. question, but I could go on and about airwaves and music and TV and all that kind of stuff and what you think you're, well, it's kind of in line with your food thing and people think you're just ingesting through your mouth. Oh no, you got, you got many senses that you're eating with your ears, you eat with your eyes, you eat with your skin. There's so much going on. So I, yeah, I consider now I've done a, a lot of work and study in this area over, over years and like really looking at the vibrational quality of, of what's around me and what I can put my, my time into and what I can ingest. And the reality is everything is vibrational. So the real answer to that is for me now, after looking at it in kind of a segmented way, like, okay, when I'm watching something or when I'm doing something, who I'm around, I'll eva I would evaluate that as far as what is the energetic quality of what I'm doing? Is this serving me, the situation? Is this serving my mission? Is this serving someone else? Or is this just something I'm trapped in? Like so many people are trapped in the whole football thing. You know? <laughs> and I, I enjoyed playing some fly football. I, I was a soccer player, so it wasn't, that was my season. So I didn't get into it as much. Um, but I do enjoy it and I, and I'll, I'll, I can sit and watch it with people, but the absolute commitment is astounding. I just did a brief calculation for myself to wonder how many hours does the average man watch and men, women do too. Average man watch football. Well, if you take two games a week, just two, like one college and one pro we'll say, or maybe you like to watch the pros or whatever. So let's just say it's just two for 20 weeks. And then that's 140 hours. Now you maybe add some time looking at scores, not even looking at the fantasy football thing, but let's just say talking with people, looking at the scores, hearing some commenters, writing, read an article, that can easily jump up to one, 160. We'll say that's a soft estimate. I'm sure it's hundreds for other people. But if you're watching just two games a week, that's a whole month of work. <laughs> that's a whole month. And you think, well, I can't get to my hobby. I can't get to do this with my kid. I, Oh, my, my special thing I've been thinking about. What if you had a month of work weeks to do it? That's great. And that's the perniciousness of something. It doesn't make football wrong. It's okay. But just recognize, I look at things like, well, what, what's most in alignment with me, which what I'm doing now, that's going to behoove my mission and what I'm doing here and make a choice about everything in life in the same quality that I would choose about what I'm going to do on a Sunday afternoon. I'll do that with everything, with what how I'm showing up because everything is vibrational. Everything is reacting with me. Everything is changing when I look at it. That's the big part of quantum physics, which we, I work from is that your mere observation of something changes its behavior and it's changing you. So what kind of life do you choose to have? And I would say work backward from that and wherever you're hoping to bring in your life in the, in the next year, well, what are the things that I require to do? Or what are the things that I am doing when I'm that guy? When I'm already the guy that I choose to be at the end of next year, what am I doing? And that, and I allow myself to then look and what are the, what are those, the quality of those things are going to, is going to show up. And it may differ depending on where I'm at. It may require more education, information, and coaching. And maybe it's more about being silent or putting time in my mission, even if it doesn't seem like there's time to do that or in service or volunteering, or maybe it's just with my kid. It's all service too. So right, but looking what was particular to, to your life and where you're choosing to go, where I choose to go, and then look at, does everything in my life reflect that? If there's something out of concert, then I will, I will shift that. And it's okay, again, if you require time to like, okay, just gonna veg, it's like, I, I, you know, you put the TV on, so be it. However, and that starts building up, recognize where you're spending your time and what you're ingesting and then make a choice based on what's in alignment with where you truly choose to be, who you choose to be and where you, where you choose to be, you know, a year from now. So it's, it, Sean has a great comment he does about the football on his bike ride in Nashville. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, tell me. Well, yeah. So well, you, the line, well, the, the joke is, so on the ride, we get to this overlooked point 
where you know you can see the whole city. And then I point out, I said, hey, there's you can see the blue seats and the red lights of Nissan Field. That's where men in striped suits throw yellow flags on the field for three to four hours. It seriously takes four hours for one game. And then I wait them to digest it and figure out what I'm talking about. And then some people are like, oh, the NFL. And then I'm like, did you all know that if you condense just the action, it's seven minutes, <laughs> four hours for seven minutes. And then it's funny, you know, you see some of the guys go, yeah, the best sport there is in the world. And then others are, you know, mull it over a little bit like that is four hours for seven minutes of action. You know, just to expound on some of the stuff you were saying, you know, uh, the only thing that actually exists is the present moment that's right now. And if you're intentional about things, you can just boil it down to is what I'm doing right now helping me to be where I want to be next year or is it not? And then, you know, your football estimates, a lot of people that I know, they're watching all of the college games on split screens on Saturday <laughs> and all of the, the pro games on Sunday and Monday night football and Tuesday night football as well. So we're talking about your, your our estimate. And then now, I don't know if you, I, I mean, uh, a good friend of mine is a football head. I don't see him much anymore. <laughs> because he's, it's in yeah. season. It's in season right now. But he's into all the gossip. They it, Now ESPN is like, is yeah. like People Magazine, but for football, it's, it's, it's all about what this guy's doing off the field or... You know, his too much celebration and all of the commentary, it's also a soap opera. And, you know, the old, the old saying, what is it? Small minds talk about people, large minds talk about ideas. And they're constantly talking about people now. Grown men talking about people they don't even know. <laughs> but they're talking about people. You know, it's very low vibrational and... and yeah, but you know, football was designed to be a distraction. So, yeah. well done to the people that designed it. You gotta give them credit for occupying a whole day of people's lives now, because that's you know what it is. Yeah. So, and it goes well if you go out every Saturday night drinking. You don't feel well, so you just want to veg out on the couch or in a, you know, you know, get the hair of the dog, as they say. Um, and yeah. you also tell people on your ride that it's a nonprofit. Yeah, I also, I also, <laughs> yeah, right. the, yeah, NFL, the yeah, NFL is insane. literally yeah. a nonprofit. And then I mean, most like, people are like, no, it's not. And I'm like, yeah, 501c3, no tax, just like Scientology. <laughs> so that's, uh, we pass by a yeah. Scientology center, so I go into Scientology a little bit. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, yeah, what that TikTok I responded to the other day, Angela. So funny. I don't know if you saw it or not, but we were I was Googling it while on the TikTok and yeah, JPL, Jet Propulsion Lab, which is NASA's first rocket creator, all of those guys lived with L. Ron Hubbard. Mm. It's legit Scientology and NASA and the beginnings were well, right there. With Did the you time. know that, Michael, that L. Ron Hubbard was started NASA? Well, I had been more familiar with the Nazi influence in NASA and, yeah. uh, and that actually Nazi and NASA are kind of close. And you look at the serpent and the, you know, I, I get into this, you know, the, all these things as well from, but I had, I had, I, I might've come across that, but I mean, these guys are all, they're all doing stuff together. And the, yeah. and it's just the idea that anything you watch, anything is the, is the, actually what's going on is kind of comical, even football, even football people think, well, that's was the game like no it wasn't how do you know that they didn't do a little bit of adjustment so they got a really close game or the certain team won mm -hmm. just because you saw it on the television it's it's, it's there's matter. aspects of professional wrestling there's there they have ideas that they want to see happen in mm -hmm. any given year you know? sure that's why I'm the super bowl went from blowouts when we were kids to all of a sudden every single year it's within three points reliably every single year for how many years? It doesn't there, happen that way. That's not how. That's just not. That's not random. There's nothing random about that at all. 
I looked into that. I was going to do a movie about them, what's going on with like these topics with sports. And as importantly as that, and I do honor the guys. I've met a lot of players. It is a hard life. I mean, if you're doing that, these guys are are on pain meds from like first week of training. And I, you know, months of this stuff and the brutality of it. Like I honor those guys. They're doing their best for themselves and their family. The thing is, it's it's about the observer. It's and there's there's something to be said with how they abuse those guys as well. But that's a different conversation. It's, since we're talking to our trucker buddies today and, and, you know, and other, other men, I would say on the other part of that whole conversation though, is that people watch the sport like they do action movies. Same thing happens in action movies. You have mirror, what's called mirror neurons in your brain that simulate that simulate it to such a strong extent that you have an emotional response, which is why that people have an emotional response in a movie or cheer a movie, even though they clearly know it's fiction or that why they're cheering football to the extent that they do is that, you know, unless you have your husband playing football or your best friend, like what is cheering about, right? You have mirror neurons in your brain. So your brain thinks it's there. You actually are creating this idea that you're there. And so what are ultimately you're doing? You are living vicariously through someone else. You are getting your hit of dopamine through what somebody else's dreams. And so by the time you played, watched two days of football, you don't have time for your dreams anymore. Now you gotta get back to the reality of your day to day. So it's actually stealing your dreams. You're, you're thinking you're satisfying this part of yourself, which is saying, I'm moving forward and I'm living life vicariously. No, you're not. The players are living life. They're living their dreams. You're living somebody else's dream. And then on top of that, you're putting their name on your back. <laughs> I mean, you're and paying for they it. They own you. They literally own you. Sorry, no one's putting their number on me. I mean, people put numbers on themselves, and we look at numbers in another context, like in a prison or in a concentration camp. People voluntarily pay hundreds of dollars to put numbers on themselves, to make themselves a number, not even their own number, somebody else's. Talk about abdicating your own personal power. It is so rife in society and they've done, and it's, it's very juicy and it's very fun. You got people doing, of course, it's going to be interesting. They have to make it interesting for you to watch or you wouldn't participate, but just be open to the idea that it's not really for you. <laughs> it's not for you. And it's actually setting our society and our communities and our men back. Meanwhile, while they think that they're engaged, they're actually just being fooled by their own brain. That, that's why it was designed. It was designed so that we, so that as a population, we have more cogs, more worker bees, more people that will gleefully work for someone else's dream for their whole lives. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why it was created. That, that's it's the modern day gladiators, right? It, you know. And uh, the other thing too is, I just saw an interesting. Um, it was on Instagram, but it was a commercial. I think it's a commercial made for TV, where. I mean, that's, that was the feel of it, at least. It had high production value. And it was, they knock on somebody's door and they go, you tweeted out that you would never stay on the ground that long after a gut punch from some boxer. I forget his name now. And then they're like, Mike. And then the dude comes out and then punches him in the gut. And then he's like, and then they're like, get up. Would, I thought you were, you would never stay down. You, and the guy's on the ground and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's what they actually believe it's them. They've they've connected with that thing that they're watching and they're living vicariously through whomever their false idol is, you know, where you know it should be themselves that they're aspiring to be, not, you know, number thirty-four. <laughs> In that discussion of like the behind the scenes brainwashing really and programming. I think all of us here are aware that there's been a massive, for very, very many generations, goal to emasculate men and mm -hmm. destroy the family unit and, to, and basically kill men off. And I, I, we're, we're living in it. Hi, and welcome to the reality. And it's, I see it just so much. And I'm like, that's why I'm a big advocate for men. And I'm constantly like, oh, there's another one. Yay. You should meet each other. So what do you have to say about that? the emasculation of men and because like you got you both i assume are you straight men like you you like women you're like manly yeah i thought i thought yeah, i think so i didn't what didn't want you to throw me something that i hadn't i didn't i wasn't aware of <laughs> yes great <right>, yes <laughs> so like so the emasculation of men right is also the brainwashing of telling them that oh you can't meditate 
or like because that's that's not manly or they're a lot of it is removing their essential like uh their strength by way of women attacking them i mean that's a whole other discussion too as a w- women have been emasculating men but the women have been brainwashed to do it so it's like this dirty little cycle that we're in and I'd love you to speak on that. What's your what's your experience with dating world and also the emasculation of men? Like, what's your um, do you know? I mean, obviously, I think you notice it. Am I right? I mean, there's a lot of betas out there. There's a lot of betas. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of simps. There's all these books on LTR or no F female led relationships. FLR like that. That's you know that's what these men want. It's by design. I mean, if if you want. <laughs> You know, power is is intoxicating, and if you want more power, the weaker you make the masculine in your society, then the more power that you will have. So that's why there is an all-out war on masculinity of all forms, because people want more power. You know, you can fly a lot of things at people if there's no strong men around, and everybody will eat it up, because... That are that that is the brakes on, you know, agendas for people is strong men. So I, I, there is certainly an all-out war on that. It's not a new thing. Governments everywhere always want more power, and that's why I think it's it's being promoted. You know, it's it's a crazy thing, but if you research feminism there's appears to be strong ties to the intelligence a- agencies that started the feminist movement in the 70s so why would that be well think about it what's the next step because the weaker you have of men in your society then the more power that your government has they've been the pesticides that they put on plants this is the other reason why i'm um why i'm a carnivore predominantly is because the pesticides that they put on plants are destroying hormones, male and female hormones. As wow. far as the males, you know, atrazine, very well documented. I mean, Alex Jones famously shrieks about it when they're turning the frogs gay, you know, but, but it is reality. And it's not just frogs, it's other animals too, that it actually can switch their sex. You know, you do the, you look at the testosterone levels in men, they're 50% lower than they were 15 years ago. Not 100 years ago, 15 years ago. This Everything's is in plastic now. And you want to know why you don't have as much energy or why you're not getting as much stuff done? It's testosterone level. Another crazy thing, too, is, and people get really offended when I say this, testosterone levels are linked to higher intelligence. I didn't do the studies. I didn't create this reality. That's just the way that it is. And there's tons of studies that point at that. So if you're not doing something to optimize your testosterone levels, then you're not optimizing your brain either. And women make, make testosterone too, you know? So it's not, I'm not saying that women aren't smart. It's, it's about, you know, getting what your body, getting the maximum amount that your being can make is what you want. And that's another reason for the organ meats, uh, Michael. And the other reason for the organ meats is it has the perfect ratio of iron and copper to build new red blood cells. Red blood cells are what oxygenates your body, which is what keeps you out of disease. Side that's- note, there's those pills that you turned me on to, the Ultra 40 liver pills, so I don't have to eat liver. That's some good stuff. So that's I've been taking that. And I also can take it as a meal replacement, by the way. Like if I'm, on the, if I'm on the road, mm-hmm. I'll just pop a, a liver pill. Mm-hmm. Because generally hunger pains are caused by mineral deficiencies. It's your brain is, you know, alerting you that you need to eat something because it's low on minerals. And liver has all of the minerals. It is one of the only single source foods in the world. You can eat solely liver and only liver and meet all of your nutritional requirements and need nothing else, uh, which is a very you know peculiar thing. But I wanted to back up one thing when you said this uh, feminism supposedly could have possibly blah blah started with the three letter agencies. Right. I just want to back up and say that does not mean that you don't respect women and don't want women and don't want to promote women and th- that doesn't. Right. 
th there's an, another agenda there of the poisoning right. of women, not the we don't want you equal, like not that you're not human. You right. know what Femininity I mean? is fantastic. It, it's it's required for us to be successful. You know, the the masculine and the feminine together working for a common goal is a force that is difficult to be reckoned with because the femininity pulls the best out of the masculinity, the masculinity pulls the best out of the femininity. And if you're trying to create a reality for yourselves, having both working together for a common goal is potent. Um, so no, it, it's the feminist movement has nothing to do with femininity or women. It was a movement that was created by three-letter agencies. To separate the... To separate yeah. that powerful duo. It's to keep that duo <coughs> apart. And to keep that duo, if they do get together, to not work together for a common goal. And if, and if you're not working together, well, why are you together? If you're at battle with your intimate partner, then what are you doing? You know, that, that's not... You're not working... You're not moving your ship forward and what? it's it's a potent thing it's a really potent thing destructing destroying the family unit is one of the number one things that regimes that are trying to gain power do they try to destroy the family unit oh they've been and very successful very successful i mean if you look at yuri brezhmanov's video which was done in the 80s he was saying back then, or maybe it's the early 90s, he was saying back then that the demoralization of, of the United States has already been done. Oh, yeah. And well, that's why I backed up for the feminist comment, because it goes back to what you both said at the very beginning, when, with, when you're being present moment and you're not going into the triggers, because you right. just saying that sentence, oh, I can yeah. already, I can already totally hear... Different. I can already hear a, a whole wave of like, oh, I liked him, but not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, because the, he's, the he's, truth he's, isn't nice. High five. <laughs> oh, God, love you. As it's, it's very hard to get around those triggers with certain words. People, like, start having a conversation about anything, and they, you know, about truth, and they're going to freak the hell out. When, and that's why I was so interested in, Michael, what you were saying about the subconscious editing and the tools that you use for that, because, obviously... You know, I can bump into a lot of triggers, but also, you know, the truth must be said as well. So, you know, it's, well, the truth. If you don't speak the truth, then you yourself are getting weaker, and I would prefer to not do that. Well, I'm going to throw some truth out there with the ladies, and Sean and I talk about this all the time because I I work I have worked many many years with many with women, and I have noticed the women in their 20s and 30s are a hot mess like m more poisoned than older women more poisoned than the younger and they're on a ton of meds they're triggered to hell they're eating bad food they're wearing all the makeup that's also got the poison in it you said like you can get the poison through the skin so they're like extra poison like more poison than the men and then they're triggered with the man with these words toxic masculinity femininity feminist movement i hate you like you know, on tiktok there's ways to shun your man i mean it's 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 it, i'm like wow and and that's all intentional so i just i'm curious what you two are seeing out in the world like how are you navigating it yourselves in the relationship space when it comes to who to <laughs> relate to that's a uh, i believe is something that's um a, a little bit different conversation than, than what's going on with masculinity as a whole because I feel that we're going to bring in you're going to you're going to relate to or you're going to attract somebody who's your vibrational match or someone who's going to be um, able to specifically uh, trigger you because why because those triggers in the subconscious aren't even though they might produce very stark harsh emotions and reactions they're uh, the beautiful part of a relationship and this might be the answer is that or a part of the answer is recognize that even the concept of relationship is so been distorted that it has become this very much and i lived in china it's very much like this in china at least in the some of the in the city i live but very transactional it's very transactional it's like we are doing this business arrangement 
and you know you're these are the things that you must check off the list and these are the things that i must check off the list and then this is what constitutes a good marriage business and i think to a large extent that still exists that is here it's a little bit more um from maybe for women looking at that um cer certain markers for security nothing wrong with that it's just part of our process and then uh, for men it seems to have turned around beauty but also sex but it's not even the sex that we were designed for that can actually reach higher states of consciousness, touch the divine. It's this slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, NFL sort of performance. And people think then they gauge the, the value of the relationship or the, the quality of the relationship based on how much sex they're having, as if that was A, the only bellwether for a successful relationship and B, the sex you're having because you were taught and shown largely through our society, largely through pornography, largely through the abdication of the divine voices coming through, that that's what this animalistic thing that you see on the movies is all is what it is. And if you're not getting that, then you got to get it someplace else. It's there's a distortion after distortion that is keeping people weak. And so, you know, in the part of becoming more masculine, it's not like being stronger. And, you know, like all of these words that come through, you know, you, you basher and you slammer and you do all this kind of stuff. It's like, you, you it's, it's you've been manipulated so and we and like you said angela both men and women have been manipulated and they're playing these different roles so i would say the first thing is just look at growth as the main or a main objective of relationship and if you're just thinking love will just solve it all or that i gotta have i gotta have this that or the other then you're missing the point it's about you it's about what your partner brings forth in you and what you do with it and then how you serve your partner in the same way in a high quality relationship the only quality relationship the only relationship that i will even entertain anymore is with a woman who is solid i would say solid in her spiritual self really is connected to the divine the all there is and that's first first is oh, over you yes because that's who you where you came from that's who you really are and anybody who's passing on the embodiment process of growing in wisdom and doing self-discovery and self-development is a complete pass for me. Not make you make it bad. It's just, I've done this. And for me, I've seen how essential that is. I mean, they talk about, it's talked about the trifold relationship, you know, with God as a part of that triangle, right? So without that, I mean, the trifold relationship, even a three person friendship, we were we have a, we're a three person and it, how, look how easy it is to flow the conversation. We have all of these different, the different energies and different comments and different perspectives, and we can kind of harmonize. It's very solid structure is the triangle, the most solid structure there is. If you, and if that in, in a divine partnership, in a beloved relationship, if that triangle is made with the divine, like super solid, and that requires consistent commitment to do that not just oh yeah oh i believe in god you believe in god. okay we're good or you do yoga i do yoga we're good no no it's the, it's the consistent embodiment the evolution of the self and then bringing that bring that to your partner not ask your partner to fill you up with that but you bring it to your partner and then partner brings that to you now you're two complete beings coming together and that's that power structure that those in control fear so much because if you were when you are solid within and then you come together with another being like that in divine intimacy you know you're you're, you're developing you're bringing forth the creation energy in a way that's sacred in a way that's healing in a way that's growing um that around you and it's very 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 powerful but of course they're going to you know diminish that in every movie every single tv oh, show yeah. sitcom is a twin flame or a, are like a backward relationship that they're trying to you know survive in and every single movie it's when it comes to that it's romance or it's falling out of love it's all about romance which is the smallest part of a relationship overall so we've been duped with these excitation um it's excitement it's not it's not divine connection and peace and contentment and building together it's excitement and we're hopped up on the excitement so while you're hopped up on the excitement or you think that pornography is what sex is about you've been manipulated and it's it's time all of us can continue to grow on this Listen, we're intimate we're infinite beings of love so you can i can continue to grow we can all continue to grow there's no place i am that you're that someone else is not it's recognizing that your invitation if you're hearing this is now invitation to go deeper is now is to really see who you are and come with that come complete to your come next relationship that. 
I'm so naughty. I literally like, <laughs> come with that. And, and, and I asked Sean that same thing. I'm like, what are you looking for in a woman? And he goes, huh, a woman who's stable. And then we both just started laughing. I'm like, I fell well, to the floor. I'm like, good luck. <laughs> because part, part of what you're talking about when you say divine connection or somebody who's, or a woman who's connected, you're essentially saying a woman who can manage her own nervous system, one who is not in constant fight or flight. Because if you're constantly in fight or flight because of physical, chemical, or emotional stress, you are not connected to the one consciousness, so you have no base to build upon. They're just energy vampires sucking as much calm energy as they can out of you, and they're not putting anything back into the collective that you are as a duo. So you're not building that more energy. There's another thing I was going to say. So you were talking about China being very transactional. I think that that transactional, transactional energy is here too in America. And then I also think it's the Disneyfication, as I say. So it's the majority of our, are either transactional, you know, they're looking for a multimillionaire over six feet tall, who's also ripped, which by the way, if you look at the demographics, that's 0.38% of the population without <laughs> considering that they're ripped. So once you put ripped into there, what are we talking about? 0.038% of the population, multimillionaire, over six feet tall and ripped. And then you ask, you know, these women and they'll estimate it at 30% of the population is like that, which is, uh, is just hilarious. That's not the way that it is. But so if you have the choices of Disneyfication, you know, where, where it was, I forget how you put it, where it was, how it's depicted in the movie, where it's, it's like an anxious energy. They're falling in love. They're, the romance, it, the like yeah, romance the, juices. Yeah, you said it well. And, 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 but, uh, or you, you word it, to, Michael. I, there was several things. I mean, I hopped up on the juice or the, fall, the, the excitement. It's the excitement right. of the, the falling in and falling out. But that's the key word, it's the falling. Why are you right. falling instead of building? Anyway, right. go ahead, Jim. Yeah. So you have the transactional and you have the people, and I call it Disneyfication or falling, or the excitement of it. And that makes up, you know, the majority, I believe. So it's, it's very difficult. It's like a, a, as you get further along this path of, you know, I don't even know. I, so many terms that you can use to describe the path that I think that Michael and myself are on, you know, make people's like eyes roll into the back of their head, but spiritual or getting in contact with the one or nervous system control or, you know, the whole meditation and all of these things, I think makes it more difficult because you won't put up with transactional, you won't put up with disnification or falling, you know, you have to take into account how many women are poisoned by the stuff they're putting on their skin, the stuff that they're putting into their eyes, the stuff that they're putting into their mouth. And if you have physical, chemical, or emotional stress, so, you know, which can happen from the things that they're putting into their eyes, the things they're putting on their skin or mouth. And then once you're in lack and you're, you're, in a, you're, you're in your fight or flight nervous system, then you look for transactional because you have a hole that needs to be filled. You're not complete yourself. And if you're not complete yourself, then you have no energy to give to a collective duo. So you're not getting anywhere as a duo. You have an energy vampire and you have somebody who's trying to build something. So. Yep. I, you said yeah. something, Michael, that I think is so profound. You said in service to each other. And I think that that is the key because, and that is what, I mean, I don't want to hate on my ladies because I certainly like, I, I am one and I, and I know many of them and, and, but I will say I consistently see this and get this as a complaint from the men that I work with that the women are toxic and, and they're not in service at all. In fact, the women can't stand you, my friend, because you see them. And when, you, and when you, yeah, and when you're see when when they when you see somebody like you see their issues, uh, all you can do is I hate him. Because you, well, yeah. you, you can see it, and it's and also I've learned from myself just I mean, just to throw that out there that I don't I no longer 
talk about my relationships with men to women. Oh, yeah, that's a huge red flag for me. If if a woman has a ton of girlfriends and then she's constantly telling me about how she was telling, you know, Cindy, Janice, and Deborah about, you know, the argument that we had. Yep. It's like, if you're involving your sisters, your mother, and your friend group in our relationship, it's doomed to fail. Yeah. Because even if you have the most altruistic of friends and family, occasionally you're going to rub up against this man is taking time away from our friendship and so even if you have the best friends and they really care for you occasionally because they're not perfect nobody's perfect they're going to give bad advice you need to give oh, yourself yeah. your own advice you need to have your own intimate relationship otherwise it's not an intimate relationship so. And they'll find something, like, for example, you know, he didn't pick you up from the airport, dump him. Yeah. And it's like, you don't, you, have, you didn't have the whole uh, story. He didn't, but, he didn't send you flowers after the second date? Oh, my God. I literally was at oh, a big girl. dinner. I was at oh, a big girl. dinner with all these ladies, Michael and Greece, and they were all complaining about the men. They're like, oh, my God, I blocked him. Because if you don't send me flowers after our date and... And we actually did the naughty. If you don't send me flowers, you're blocked. And I was like, and I'm just sitting there. And I, I raised my hand. I was like, I just want to ask y'all, did did you tell the guys that? Well, did you and tell then also, them that? Also, like, how then did they Deborah, know that? That's what Janice said. But then Deborah said, he sent you flowers. That's like weird. Like after the second date, he sent you flowers. Like no, he's that not guy's weird. weird. <laughs> right. So it's you know, it's it's and and that's the thing. You involve a bunch of people that are you know, stuck in judgment, not in curiosity. And they're all going to have, you know, negative retorts. So it's oh, yeah. just, and, well, and, and, and uh, they would lose their mind over what I do. Like I, because being in service, what one just thing I want to throw out there, because I just, I think this should be said out loud is um, I see a guy, a working dude that gets up at three, four in the morning, works in construction, bust his ass then has to drive three hours home and then he you know goes to bed at nine and usually like drink drinks beer watches the tv goes to bed at nine and then he does it all over again so being in service part of my meditation that my work is to, that where i can i bliss out is cleaning so i have the code to his house obviously with permission i'm like and so i went to his house on a friday just the last week and cleaned his whole house for him to just give him something else that he doesn't have to worry about. You can come home and you're just like, ah, oh, and there's food you got. Some, and then of course, you know, I, the transaction there is like, listen, I'm not wearing any pants, but just kidding. Well, <laughs> but there's it's, no, but it's like, you, there's you, the in service. You didn't, <laughs> but you didn't do it as transaction. No, like, I do it. Cause maybe I, that particular evening he was too tired and, and fell asleep too. Exactly. But, but the thing is, is, you know, you're, you moved that collective forward. You know, there's now, now his house is clean. You know, now there, there's more bandwidth for him to but, do something yeah. with you. You know, you did something that benefit, benefited your intimate partner. And you know, you're that's... not just, and you didn't do it with a trade involved. Right. You did it ju just to do it. You know why I did it? It's because I have a lot of respect for him. And I think yeah. that that's a lot of where women are lacking because they don't have respect for men in many situations. And they don't like, where's your respect? You know, I, I was actually just yesterday, I went to lunch by myself. Just, I'm just curious if you, <laughs> just to tell you the story. I was sitting there in a booth, you know, how you can hear everybody's conversation. And I'm by myself sitting there and I hear this woman berating her husband. Like she is talking like horribly to him. She, and it's all about, you are not getting that boat. You are not getting that boat. Cause I'm going to go to Italy. I'm going to Italy. You're not getting that boat. And there was a, another dude at the table with them and another woman. And the dudes were talking, started talking about, well, I really want this boat. Cause they started talking about like boat jargon. And she goes, whatever, you can talk a big game in front of your friends, but you're not getting that boat. 
I was like, holy cow, you were just so disrespectful to your dude. Like, I just can't even believe it. And and I just had to lean over and get a look at these people. I had to see them from my, and, and it's like, you know, when somebody looks exactly like you expect them to look, you know? And the, and the woman like had pinched little lips, like mm-hmm. thin little, angry, like she's holding in a fart. Looks like she's been doing that for a very, very long time. And the dude looks like he's just trying to get by and have some fun. And when they finally got in front of me at the end, like when they're checking out, I just looked up to catch his eye and he's, and he just nodded, said hello. And I was like, Hey, I, heard, I, I don't mean to be weird, but I am weird. I just want to throw this out there that, uh, I heard y'all's conversation. Get the boat. <laughs> yes. Yeah, tell him to get the boat. And, and he, and she goes, he <laughs> yeah. and she goes, he doesn't need a boat. And I was like, y'all, you know what? We're all going to die. Have some more fun. Get the yeah. boat. Yeah. And he goes, look, look he, so she, he's like, somebody's on my side. Somebody's on my side. I'm like, you need somebody on your side, buddy. Yeah. And, and he's like, we should have more fun. I was like, that's it. I mean, just have some more fun. But you could tell that that woman wasn't having fun with that dude for a very long time. And um, it just it that to me is like, again, being of service to each other and in service to the ultimate goal, because Michael pointed out in the beginning, like in service to the ultimate goal, which is I'd love to like sum it up with what you stand for. Is like I'm with you, Michael. Like I'm in service to the infinite. I think we all are, and um, the infinite, like one connection. And when you are that way, you put that first. Then you're in service to each other. And then situations like that. Yesterday, I was like, Oh my God, you, you're not in service at all. Like get the boat, <laughs> get out, get out of there, buddy. Uh, mm-hmm. But be, yes. how can we be of service more? And and how can we inspire more men? women too but i mean i'm just specifically a men conversation well, it really is essential that both well if you can starts with you whether you're in a relationship or you're looking to get a relationship all of that stuff you just mentioned that's all subconscious patternings it's all like i deserve this you don't deserve that i should have this this is too much this is too little that's all your patterns that's not you that's not too you know you're the little baby that stands you know sits next to the other little baby and exchanges toys and glances and plays all that now if you're doing something other than that you're probably acting out of your own programming probably you've gotten it from you can have a lot of reminders by society, but you're probably living some form of the relationship that your parents or your caregivers lived. You learn that as a little one and you're just repeating it. And you think that you're a sovereign. You think that a lot of this is for me and this. No, you're just repeating the patterns. And that's that's just how life works. And until uh, you go in there and look at that, I've worked with my company, we work with a lot of couples. We work with a lot of people who come on their own with in, in regards to their relationship. And we work with a lot of people who come in for business and we go to their relationship because you cannot compartmentalize these things. You think that you can earn, you know, your your millions doing whatever you're doing while you're having a tumultuous relationship at home? No. I mean, you could potentially make a certain number, but it'll be far less and far less enjoyed than you will if you have um that harmony at home. Let's really understand that. Start with the side of you. If you're having issues in your relationship, look at yourself. And I don't mean wrong, like I messed up, I should have done this. It's more like, what in me is is inviting to come forth? What is the feeling that I'm having when this situation occurs? And what can I do to shift inside myself? And I would, you know, I expect, or I choose to be around people who do that reflection, be in a relationship of any kind. Without that self-reflection, then you're just working on patterns and what should be, shouldn't be, and all this stuff that society says is right and wrong. You can't, no, it's, you're just using everyone else's stuff. Stop playing everyone else's songs on your phone and start playing your own music. And to play your own music, it's got to come from deep inside of you. It isn't going to come from somebody else. It's going to come, you can get some ideas, but you got to go within. And that's, that's the essence of relationship. We always do that with every couple, every man, woman who comes to us. And with and everything can shift. I mean, we've got people coming in. We have certain events. They come in even just for a few days, and they're ready to get divorced at the beginning, and they're in love in a few days later. That's cool. We didn't tell them to do anything as a couple necessarily. There might be some things we do. Certainly, some part of that, but it starts inside of you. So if you're not happy in your relationship, look at yourself. And that could be maybe you are serving. So there's there's a caveat with the service because people do the service expecting to get a result, expecting to get a return. 
That's not unconditional love. If you're looking to yeah, experience no. unconditional love, that's conditional love. I do this so that I get this. Do it for you. Serve yeah. because you enjoy it, giving. Because you enjoy the power of divine love moving through your body, carried out by this offering that you're giving for you, for you. And then it also serves someone else. Wonderful. That's the catalyst. But you got to do it for you. You require to be the beacon of love, not do the love, be the love. And through service, we get to express that, to allow that to come through us in a profound way. And if you're giving and giving and then saying, well, he doesn't give anything back to me. Well, then you got to have a talk about that. You know, that's your, that's your next opportunity for growth. It's not expecting and complaining to your friends and all that stuff. That's right. Codependence. You got to, you know, you got to, you know, co oh, commiseration. That's commiseration. So it's like two people making more misery for each other. Uh, commiseration. So you get that it's happening inside of you. You can change that. And if you would like to have your ideal, be it, you know, whatever the money and the six pack and all that. And I say, well, what are you doing? Are you that? Exactly. You think you're going to attract something that you're not? No, wrong. You don't get how life works. It doesn't work that way. You know, if you would like to have a certain thing, <laughs> do the work to become that thing. You will attract like, like attracts like you will attract what you are emitting your frequency. So it goes back whether you're in or out of relationship it goes back to you. Be the man be the woman that you choose to be with. That's the answer. Agreed. Agreed. But then, all, but then also you have to be aware of the person that you're trying to mate with. If they have zero nervous yeah. system control, if they have no connection, if they, you know, haven't figured out, you know, how to at least take a motorcycle ride or a bike ride and and if they don't understand that they are not their thoughts, they are the area in between, they believe that they are the constant chatter in their brain, you know, that chatter is their mother, their father, the friends, their aunt, the, the TV programs and Disney movies that they watched when they were growing up. That is the constant chatter. That is not them. So you're not even dealing with someone that... You're not even dealing with they haven't even begun to be who they are if, if there's if they still believe that they are the constant chatter in their brain so you, you there's you can't set your sails in your course with that person because they they don't have intention yet they don't they they're you know if they want to stay in that space the only bond that they're going to get is a trauma bond and and then once you are I hate to, because it's going to sound arrogant, but once you're beyond that level, meaning that you know that you're not the thoughts, the constant chatter in your brain, and you have done the meditative work, that you can't connect with that. So no matter how much you work on you, if that person hasn't done the basics for them, there's really not a, any hope, um, I, I think, of a long-term connection. So I, you must be aware of that. I, I love divorce. It's been great. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's a choice here. There's a choice point. So you can say, or I say to people who are in some situation, I said, well, you have, you have, there's two paths you can take. One, you can walk away. You can divorce the situation and then move on. And maybe that's required in some situations, especially if there's any abuse in being involved. The reality, though, the, is that this being is in your life for a reason on your life path. You can choose to play and say, okay, she or he is da 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 I'm going to use that to improve myself. I'm going to become, I am going to further uh, evolve myself and use these things as catalysts for my own evolution. And in the process, it's very possible that that other man or woman could change. Not the result of what you're looking for, but you look, use it yourself. Or you leave. But to sit and gripe about it and complain about it, you're actually making it worse. And all of that stuff actually slows the situation out. It makes it have to stay energetically. So if you're gonna if you're gonna stick around, somebody could be on an earlier part. If you come to your own awareness and you're like, oh my gosh, my significant other, we married a, a decade ago, two decades ago, and there now I'd like to do you know evolve myself, grow my power, uh, grow my love, and they're happy just with this routine that we've had. And and like, I have to leave. No, you can invite them. You can create a new agreement. Hey, we've been together. I'd like to bring in, I'd like to look at this 
this thing about growing together. I like to grow together and, and have the next 10 years be the best 10 years. I like to have the most intimacy I ever had. You can have that. Most people think that the best times are behind them. That's a mental construct as well that they're playing into. So say, look, and, and if your partner's just, okay, look, you've been doing this, you know, you've been taking this path for a while. You're doing the yogic path. You're doing, you know, you're with Encompass Life. You're building your life. You're with whomever. And okay, I'll, I'll start. Okay, you have a new agreement. And it's okay if they're a little bit more triggered than you. It's okay if they just make the commitment. The people that do our work, they come in. We have people coming in from 20 to 75 and they're at different, they're at different levels. And it's, it's okay. It's everyone's on a path, but it all requires that they make a commitment. And if they mess up, you just say, oops, and you get back on it again. And you made the commitment to do the work for yourself. doesn't matter if you're junior or you've got three, four PhDs. We have people in a lot of different doctors in here. That's not about that. It's about your commitment and ability to respond to the stimuli, to condition, to work with your nervous system, to be able to start distinguishing what is you and what is something else. And then say, okay, wow, I, that that I blew up there and I can actually clean that up with my partner and make a new commitment. And then you can use it as a beautiful growth situation. Obviously, the others requires to make the agreement with you. If you're doing it without agreement or expecting them to do it or they've made an agreement and they continue to break and break and break the agreements, then you, obviously that situation is, t is trending downward and maybe it's time to move on. But you can use any situation to grow for your if you look at your soul path stop looking at just only this infraction or or this thing you don't have and say what if this is supposed to serve my life if this relationship is essential for my life development for my life path on earth what could it be serving me and i'm going to utilize it to grow and to and to evolve myself and and utilize what it's meant to be or hey it's your choice there's a lot of meant to be's as well i mean my the product regenerate um, that I'm putting out there which is a um, was actually created to help an ex-girlfriend get off of benzodiazepine so she was wonder she was wonderful when she was in her you know presence in her but when triggered she was an absolute monster and it you know came to figure out that it was benzodiazepine abuse. You know the only time that she was able to be calm was when under the influence of benzodiazepines, which has the rebound effect of then everything stresses you out to factor of to one hundred percent when you're not under the influence of it. So you know I, I you know that was ended up being too much. But then out of that you know some purpose was was found. It regenerate. Oh my God. And you're literally saving lives, Sean. Like you're changing people's lives. Like the messages I get from introducing people to regenerate is just, it's just great. It, Thank it, you. It, it really does influence the nervous system that you inhabit. When you're on regenerate, it's a shortcut to getting into meditation. It, it puts more GABA into your brain, which slows down the transmission of your neurons, which would tra change the frequency that your brain is operating at. And in a trauma-filled world, which ADD is caused by trauma, you know, it's a fragmented brain. It's a brain that needs defragmenting. It's a brain that's running in the wrong frequency, taking something that can get your frequency into those lower frequencies with less amplitude, lower frequencies, brings you closer to a meditative state, which brings you closer to where you can connect to the one the one consciousness that we all are the same consciousness looking back at each other just with different subconscious programming that's what we are so um, by calming down that nervous system it makes a huge difference so yeah i mean i think that you know if you're i, I understand what, totally what you're saying you know if there's a reason why you've connected with someone be curious figure out what that is and figure out how long it has to last. But the original question was about mating, right? You know, like, have, yeah. I'm sorry. It's tough. I mean, it, it, it's tough out there. It you is just tough at, out there. You, you look at the percentages of people that, that have done any sort of nervous system control, and it's very low, I, I believe. So, you know, you get the transactional people, and you have the Disney people, and then you have the people that are simply just too sick, you know, through physical, chemical, or emotional stress, 
you know, we're, you know, it's, seems to me like it's, to find a woman in her feminine, it's kind of like looking for the six foot tall guy that makes millions, it's all so ripped. <laughs> hey, they exist out there. All, every single woman in my family is, they're badasses. Michael, by the way, my, did, you, did you ever see the movie, the show Naked and Afraid? Or you know about it? You know that Heard show? About it, yeah. Naked and Afraid. Mm -hmm. The very first episode is my cousin. Like that's my fam. My family's all survivors and like survivalists. And I'm the fancy redneck that went to live in the real Paris. And I can't hawk a loogie. Like, so they, but they're all like, they could kill a deer and make an outfit out of it and shoes. So yeah, that's, that's my family. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're gorgeous they're all like everyone's gorgeous and tall and really smart and like survivalists and and actually aware so there is you know i like to i like to move at the topic is it, it, yes it's absolutely true that as you evolve and you choose um that your own divine path that you're walking the the amount of people it's like a pyramid in that way and it's going to be smaller it's going to be smaller so but instead of lamenting it what I like to see now is that everyone that I meet, and sometimes it can be the most shortest of interactions, could have a reason, could could be playing a role in my evolution. So you may say, well, I choose to have this divine cosmic relationship. Okay. And maybe you're doing the work. Okay. Why am I still meeting these Disney people, these NFL <laughs> guys, right? Maybe they're the exact, that conversation doesn't have to be a full relationship, but whatever comes from that interaction might be exactly what you require to continue the path that you've already decreed for yourself. If you're looking and you say, this is the relationship I like to have, but you're a few levels short of that, you're going to get situations and people that are going to assist you in growing. So instead of looking at it and saying, well, look, there's no one around, you can say, like Sean beautifully introduced, inquiry. Hmm. What curious what is this curiosity happening for? Like curiosity. Hmm. Okay. And so I definitely have been the cut way too fast <laughs> variety in my life. And and then now I've realized through what I've discovered in love is that that everybody is everybody is giving me again that reflection i get the chance to like instead of run and say wow that was very uncomfortable i would rather someone be not be yelling or running or whatever but there i've triggered them but they're we're, we're equally getting this opportunity to grow what if i just stay yeah Not right life. just stay in the present moment wow that's uncomfortable i could just be like next i didn't get the flowers or someone screamed or whatever or i could just be like wow what if i could just be love in this moment and allow someone else to be triggered their their what's going to be going on i'm just going to stay because maybe and this is what we found with what the work we do in in encompass live is that people have never had that before they've never even had that so and true. so i can just my ability to be love even if it and doesn't mean oh it's happy go lucky it's all soft and gooey and smushmallows and whatever it's like you're i'm talking power love force when you say okay go ahead you can you can trigger you can scream you can cry and i'll be right here no sympathy no story nothing i've got you we'll just go right here you got and that what we usually say is you got anything else like he was yeah. literally yelling at us on the you know i've had guys say to me and it's just a normal conversational tone and in the session they're like i hate you right now it's not them it's this pattern that's stuck and so i'll be like okay thank you for sharing that what else you got you're being truthful thank you how about thank you? Thank you for trusting me enough for you to have that reaction. What's, would you like to talk about that? Would you like to dive into that a little bit? That's how I do it now. It doesn't mean it's going to be, it's not, it's different than the happy-go-lucky stuff. It's, but that's where you're getting forged. That's where your love is growing. It's not going to be when it's easy and you're holding hands on the beach in cancun or wherever it's going to be your ability to stay be love in any situation in the present moment no matter what shows up i got this and that takes time to develop that it takes a resolve inside of you but that's where that's where you're going to evolution someone else who's doing that thing that you don't like is helping you do that helping you become the love being that you're meant to be and, and there is something to be said with 
you know, masculinity, a strong masculine can be, you know, the mountain that the waves of femininity crash into because a woman will test you and, you know, you do have to you know, be that for them, you know. There's just a level of storms that's acceptable versus not acceptable, which requires <laughs> them to be doing some work on their end. You know, they're not, you know, you're not a princess. You know, very, there's very few princesses in the world, I should say. There are a few. That's funny. That's really funny. So what do you stand for? What's the, like, let's see, you sum you up a little bit. Like, what, what's this, if we, what's your, what are you standing for? What do you want? What do you need? Like you as a you as a human, what do you what do you need right now, and what do you want, and what do you stand for? I think at least having awareness of what nervous system you're in. If you're in parasympathetic or sympathetic, I'd like to spread that knowledge. Have an awareness of which one you're in, and then you can adjust your course to be the best Swiss Swiss Army knife that you are, and use the best tool for the nervous system you're in and the situation you're in. It's not just about dealing with the situation, it's about dealing with what nervous system you're in, in what situation you're in. And then apply the right tool. Um, big into curiosity over judgment, because judgment will flip you into a sympathetic dominant state immediately. And then, you know, you might have that who smelled the fart face, and nobody looks good with that on them. You know, if you have a curious face, <laughs> and a curious attitude that will get, I believe that will get, and in nearly every situation that will move things forward to where your intention is, and, you know, for your being. And, you know, that's where the products come in. Most of my products are, I think, aid in people's nervous system regulation. So oh, yeah. I'm going to have some right now. I am being the change that I want to see. So that's another one. Be the change that you want to see in the world. And then, of course, like attracts like. And I also love some of the stuff that you touched on, Michael, but that's getting into the quantum world where, you know, the what's in front of you this year is for a reason. There's a reason why that, why that has come to you and figure that out as well. And edit your subconscious programs as much as you can. It's hard. It takes a lot of work to do that. But then again, know that your subconscious programs run when you're in fight or flight, when you're in a sympathetic dominant state. So if you always have that eye on the breath, you're always doing, you know, once you do enough meditation where you're, where you're essentially doing walking meditation, which means whatever you're doing, you're in a meditative state. Another thing is, you know, fitness isn't about how you look, it's about how well you can breathe, essentially. And the better you can breathe, you know, the better your whole organism is. So that's another pillar of what I, you know, believe in. And get outside, see the sun, watch it rise, watch it set. Get hot, get cold, eat well. <laughs> and what do you need, my friend? What do I need? Yeah, or want. Do you have a... You talk, Business-wise? No, or? just, in, well, it's all connected. It's all connected. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I just I want to be an, an aid, not a hindrance on the Internet and in live in person. Like I just said, be the change I, the, that I want to see. Incognito and also not incognito is I really want people or our societies to drink less as a whole. I think that it's the number one cause of cancer, number one cause of violence. It's the most unpredictable drug there is. It's the reason why our culture is sick, is because one out of four people grew up with at least one alcoholic parent. The marketing is great behind it. I, I you know, I'd, I'd like my to daughter, see My daughter, my daughter has an alcoholic parent. Yeah, and that's unfortunately very common. You know, that's, that's how it is here. You know, we, poke fun of, or that's not the right term, everybody knows that Russia has a problem with alcohol. <laughs> but everybody doesn't know America does. And hello, we do. I just, you know, feel like as long as I can be, bring, I hate to use the word positivity, that's not it, bring the right thing to the situation. 
I'm just trying to train the AI so that the AI likes me too. You know, because when the AI takes over, I'd like to be friends. I want to be friends with y'all AIs. <laughs> By the way, I put my lecture to simp beta men into AI just to see, and it, and it, and it spit out um, a very, very tame version. And I just, I'm like, no. Well, yeah, the <laughs> open, AI, open AI is trained to lie, which is <laughs> very scary. Training AI to lie just seems like about the worst idea that could possibly be done. Crazy. So. So what about you, oh, Michael? What do you one, need? One last thing, okay, and, and I also want to point out anything that has a three-letter acronym is not your friend. <laughs> <laughs> Including CAA. FBI, CIA, CAA. Three-letter acronym companies are not your friend. AMA, FDA. I mean, there's a lot. There's tons of them. CDC. Anything with three acronyms, and most of them with four acronyms. No good. That's how you know. It's part of the cabal, so. Come here, naughty. Yeah, that's the name of you know the. the yeah, did you know mm -hmm. that, Michael? That the name of it is "Come Here, Naughty." Come here, naughty is the name of what? The uh, shot, the jab. Oh, okay. Isn't that okay. funny? That's that's a, that's, a, that's uh no that's a new word learning <laughs> learning today. It's um, it's not spelled like "Come Here, Naughty," but if you phonetically pronounce it, it's "Come Here, Naughty." C-O-M-I-N-A-T-Y or something. Okay. Oh, okay, right. I love I love phonetics and love words. Also, yeah. uh, NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. Well. Random, but not so random. Really messed Four up. Letters. <laughs> Four letters. Don't trust it. JPL. <laughs> Three letters. Right. You know. Um, so what do you want and need, yeah. and what are you standing for, Michael? I, mean, like I love to help to empower people to see what's really going on. So all the things that we mentioned today, and there's a lot going on in our country, in our society. When you look at it from your real, your life path, like you came here for a reason, and you may have forgotten that as we, we were, our, our, uh, our awareness is wiped clean before we come here, but you're going to, you know, reaccess that and you're going to look back and think, oh, well, oh man, I, ah, oh, man, I should have done this. Oh, this is where I was supposed to go. I was so wrapped up in in boats and in football and, you know, paying the bills that I missed what I actually came here for. Most people are in the act one of their lives. And I see life like a movie. You're the main character of the movie. You are. It may seem odd, but that's how that's how amazingly beautiful life is. We're all serving each other. We're all characters in each other's movies. But you're the main character in your movie. And all the antagonistic forces that are absolutely so required for any interesting movie to take place. They're required. You, you know, you got the zombies or you have the cheating boyfriend or you've got the alien invasion or, you know, the stolen car or whatever. There's an action. And you don't look at the action later in the movie and think, wow, that was terrible. Why, why did that happen? No, you're like, well, thank goodness that car crash happened and thank goodness these people attacked so-and-so because it woke this character up to their true power and they began to walk the path that they were meant to walk. Everything is happening for you. And as much as these, all these characters we're talking about, if you look at it from that perspective, then you will be able to walk a much more amazing life path. And to be able to address the contrast within you, your system gone haywire, the disharmony, the triggers, the routines, the views that have been limiting you, and all of us have them. No one's immune to that. There is no enlightenment people in who are enlightened. There are beings who are enlightened who walk the earth. I feel like right now it's beyond attainment for us, but that's a great thing because that means you can continue to learn and grow your entire life and you can grow in yourself and relationship that you have an infinite amount of opportunity to grow uh, for growth and advancement. So I would just say, you know, begin to look at life that way to the next, to your next level, that everything's a blessing. Everything's happening for you and you're going to discover amazing things. And if you'd like to um, do that, you know, to, to like help me with my 15 years and my business partners, 30 years, other people coming in here of self-development work, you like to supercharge your path and get it in days instead of years, you know, come, come over and, you know, grab an appointment. And we have a, uh, on my website, uh, one website is encompass life, like in E N compass life.com slash breakthrough. Just go to the page, check it out, book a call if you'd like. And this is what we do. We help people 
get their breakthroughs in relationship and business and life and health from the inside, from the inside. We, I still am a big fan of the biological side. Do, do the work as far as your, your body, do the yogic work, do the eat, eat the stuff that's going to support you too. We do the inner side of that. And since the inner is projecting to the outer, then it, we find it to be very powerful and very fast. So come over and, and, and supercharge your day. And I just love empowering people. We love empowering people. I empower a variety of guides and coaches and specialists over here. So, you know, we love working with folks and we love bringing them to their, to their beauty and their power in, in every, in every, in every corner of the country. Oh, that's what was, was, what was going to be my next question. Do you come to you in person or do you do it online? How we actually, work? we do most of it online. The assessment mechanisms I, I talked to you before, our ability to read people on, even on zoom is exceptional. So it, it's uh, it's still like having a, a deep wilderness retreat that we do online because we can read people so well. That's cool. And we also accompany that with we have a couple um, in presence events. One is using our tech, we kind of circle up in a conference room environment, more of a typical. It's always small. It's very small because we're actually doing one on one work simultaneously. So we require small groups to do that. And then we have one that one's called how to wow. We actually help people get the how questions. How am I going to move ahead in my life? How am I going to have the relationship that I'd like to have? How am I going to grow my business and help them tap into their own answers? Get the wow in seconds. And then we also do one, one different type of thing called body electronics, which is a super interesting experience where we super saturate the body with minerals, enzymes, live foods, and then we apply uh, sustained acupressure to certain points were found out to be connected to just being able to move the traumas and stuck stuff in the body and literally hold those for 30, 60, 90 minutes and only projecting love. Everyone's in a sick required environment and you're, you're actually energetically feeding and helping or in connecting to that being who's receiving you will give and receive. And then instantly like fingers get super hot and, and instantly stuff starts coming up. So it starts the next thing to be healed, the next thing to be healed. And it's like a quantum immersion in, in healing and move things forth for, for people. So that's kind of special. It obviously requires to be together for that. We do like a retreat environment. It's really cool. At the same time, most of our track, we have a whole master's track, like an Ivy League in this sort of quantum consciousness work that we're doing. And that's the majority of us online. So you can tune in. We have people even tuning in from other, other countries and people coming in. We're doing stuff from New Zealand and the UK and Singapore and, and so on. So That's it's cool. everybody deserves the chance to do that. And ultimately the answer is us having 5,000 person events. It's you doing you in your environment with your community, with your circles of influence and impacting. And that's how we're going to impact our world. I believe in the firmest way is simply truly, truly empowering each other with love on, on that kind of personal basis to be able to get through the contrast and the subconscious stuff inside that's impeding you and flip it and move it and then help each other. We're all here to help each other. You live the path that you've lived. If you've had a lot of challenge in your life, it's for a reason. It's not to say, oh, this is so horrible. My family's horrible. Society's horrible. The country's horrible. No. What if those were the catalysts in your movie and you transforming that challenge into something victorious that enables you to then serve and help others take that same path? It's all a gift. It's a matter how you look at it. And you can have a lot of fun. You can have a lot yes. of fun doing it. It doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, you know, I sat on a cushion for like thousands of hours doing meditation <laughs> or like going into wild places and, and, and really challenging my nervous system through living in various countries and doing things and having everything new all the time and saturation and me getting poised in those situations and not actually activating and doing things. Yeah, that's great. And all that can be a blast, even if you do it in your own neighborhood, in your own house with your own family. Or it can be hard and sweaty and terrible. <laughs> it's your choice. It's again, it's again your choice. You have that you're creating with your feelings and emotions. You're they're your purview, no one else's. So step into your into your power, even if it's a little bit today, and recognize that it's up to you. It's in your hands. And that's a beautiful heroic path in your journey. And you have that at your disposal. Whether you check me out with and, and, and you work with us or someone else or you're on your own, you have the power within you, you can do it. You can live a life that's exponentially more interesting, loving, abundant than you have now and could ever even dream of when you realize who you really are and begin to walk that path of truth. It's fun. Mm -hmm. And piling on your movie analogy, life is a movie. Nobody should aspire to be the victim 
in the <laughs> yeah, right. nobody <laughs> likes the victim character and nobody wants to be the victim character so yeah. <laughs> leave that victim energy behind you as soon as you hear this because mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're a victim you're you're inherently weak so don't be the victim in your movie be the hero in your movie and do what the hero would do you know the the events in life or in the movie those are to unveil the hero in the movie typically so awesome hey movie. well I, i'll throw out my hero then like my goal like what i'm doing is introducing people to you so they can get off of booze and benzos and get their nervous systems balanced and michael i love what you're doing thank you for having this conversation and and also i know as a filmmaker you have a series that addresses human trafficking that i think is so cool and so gorgeous and not gorgeous it's just you're a good filmmaker it's just horrible horrible subject but you're doing it in such a good way and so i call it down right here right now you just get full funding happen and so it is amen you're welcome mm -hmm. so i just like to just fund that you know because it's so the, the fact that you are such a good spiritually connected and also like aware man making a film about this is so important well it's a series right it's a mm -hmm. and um it's it's so important because so many times as you are aware that so many times that the ones that say that they're doing the good work are actually the perps mm -hmm. yeah. oh my god and you're just like oh my god and so i i appreciate you doing that and yeah. saving the women and the little boys out there and i've been starting with a, a site to support uh, survivor leaders as well as part of the overall campaign that the, that the tv show is part of I'm starting this already on my own, whereby survivor leaders who have done a great deal of work for themselves, they've, they've done a lot of healing and now they're in place of service, service and prevention, service and restoration, um, primary care, education, mentorship. They're already, already all serving other kids and young ones have going through this or preventing them from going through this. And I'm setting up that site uh, now to be able to highlight them and show people, yes, this is where you can go to be able to inform yourself, inform others, and support the mission of the grassroots work of the people who actually lived it. And the people who lived it are the best way showers for us to get any topic, to really understand as people who have actually lived it and then transmuted it in themselves and then done a lot of work inside themselves to, to then own that. And they're great examples for transformation, which is another reason that this series marries with my, my work in, in transformation because they're great examples they're showing that you can be a slave for 15 enslaved for 15 years and come around and have uh, a beautiful family and a prosperous life and be serving others yes and that means you too <laughs> if they can do it you can do it and i love sharing the, their beauty the beauty of their of their journey the beauty of their service the beauty of their hearts they're just it's astounding they're even alive and they're yeah. doing this they're massive motivations for people and can really show us the way home in, in certain respects with ourselves and our in our communities so thanks for mentioning that and i'm, I'm gonna put a link and a whole little write-up yeah. for you so i just i i because i'm like that's my heart too like because i know about i unfortunately know a lot about it yeah. and but the thing is is americans are the biggest buyers in that world and and i think the way you get to the buyers which are the same as the alcoholics and the drug addicts and the porn addicts that uh, that sean is addressing that you you show them good examples show them good examples of good men so that that's my goal is like i'm not going to condone it but it's like you're forgiven let's that, that's a whole there's a whole move on and, you know no that's all that's <laughs> yeah, all that, i would i would, I would yeah, actually yeah. love to have you on another uh discussion about specifically about your movie or your show your series but i think it's important to show good examples because a lot of people don't know what to do it's like i you know i want to have i want to have a different life i want to not be on booze i, I want to have a good relationship i want to be a cool man you know i work a lot of men who are like i want to have a solid life with myself but i don't know how to meditate i don't know what to eat but and so i'm like you know let's start simple what are you doing with your time mm -hmm. and that's what we're here for that's you know? why sean's here that's why i'm here that's why you're Probably. here is that you're not no one has to do this alone it's not you're expected it's not like we all popped out and had all this wisdom and experiences 
we earned it. We earned it. We went through fires. We went through a lot of things and, and we can, and by tapping into the knowledge of others, us and others, you can truncate that part of your journey because your journey may be different than, than ours. And, and other than includes activism and, and media and, and starting companies, it may just be in your own household. You may be here to be the most amazing father that anyone has ever seen. Awesome. And you can get, you can utilize other people's wisdom, invest in yourself by, and cut that line of time so you can be fully present with what you're here to do and who you're here to be. So, in, you know, to make that choice, invest in your, in what you're consuming, invest in how you're, you're shaping yourself and you're shaping your family, because that's, that's the best investment that you can, I feel that you can make. Um, and that's always going to pay dividends. It's not, but it won't come on its own. You can <laughs> some point like anything worth it in life, it's going to take some effort and it's going to take a significant commitment on your part, but that's, that's part of the life path is to, to do that. Like a good hero there. Yeah. We like to think that you just have superpowers and you do have superpowers, but the reality is to hone those and use those responsibly. It's, it's going to take some shifts and those shifts can be great fun and really adventurous and a little scary at times. And that's okay. Just take the, take the journey, take the adventure. That's what you're here to do. Your superpowers come when you gain your presence and your presence is what's installed in you. That, that is what is, you know, reincarnated into you is your presence. So there's a battle and the battle is to get you out of your presence, to put you in a sympathetic dominant state, to put you into fight or flight so that you can't connect to your power, which is your presence. And once you're in your presence, you can use your emotional guidance system to figure out what you're here to do. So it's potent stuff. You know, no matter what you come from or where you've been, what you've been through, getting into a parasympathetic dominant state is the answer. Well, thank you for helping me get into mine. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for being a good example in the world. Appreciate you, Angelo. And then I, I, I didn't ask me to assume that it's been on other broadcasts that you have, but these products and what you're seeing with them and what they're made of and where you see that going for yourself. I'd love to hear that. The ingredients you, first. So the, the loop product, the brand is, is, doesn't touch at all on don't drink, nothing to do with that. It's just, here's a product that will get you sophisticated. that will enable you to have a good time. It also happens to be alcohol free. Regenerate is for people that you know want to quit alcohol or benzodiazepines. And then the interesting thing from my the feedback, you know, it's designed for alcohol and benzos. But what people are saying is that it seems to remove people's need to need something. So people are saying that it's helping with smoking cessation, with shopping addictions, because it really is at its core an anti-anxiety supplement. So if your anxiety is at an 11 and then you lower it to a three, well, you're gonna make much better decisions. So whether that's not picking up another smoke or another drink, cause you're more centered into your parasympathetic dominant state. So what I envision is it's more along the lines of, I just wanna be the change that I wanna see. So, you know, I wanted to see less alcoholism so that I have a couple options that aid less alcoholism, less alcohol consumption or abuse. So where I see it going is, is as high as it's intended to go. The goal, like I said, was to be the change I wanted to see. Anything beyond that is just extra. It's been going in waves, you know, we'll sell a ton of them and then ebbs and flows, but overall I'm pleased with the direction that they're both going in and everybody who's buying that, it buys it again and again and again buys yeah that's a, that's something that's great is you know it, it, what the release was what late late august early september and yeah. some people are already on their fourth bottle which cool. to me seems a little bit like overusing it but if it works <laughs> that well you know there's nothing in it that's toxic so it, it's not one of those products where over time you need it more I see it still climbing. I, I mean, I, I think, Angela, you see the momentum of it, too. It's 
Oh, of- I see. Well, if you had a vulture capitalist, you know, it would be like, go, let's go to millions of people. But I love that you stay small and let it like organically grow. And I just, yeah. I see it as, I see it in every chiropractic place and every spa. And, and it's, it, it freaking would, works. It, it freaking works. Wonderful. It is wonderful before a massage or any body work, yoga. It gives you a clear mental energy by lowering the volume on that anxiety. I take them together. I just did it. Yeah. I just witnessed it. <laughs> you, can, you can take them together. They're really both standalone products. One is geared to have fun with, you know, so you're with all your friends that are drinking and you choose to not drink, but it's a lot to be, you know, around that energy yeah, a, without something for yourself. And plus, one. I think we're so, you know, in, it's ingrained in us to cheers and to have a tr- celebratory drink. And I think when you don't drink, then it's like, you're, you know, you're like fist You have a problem. <laughs> you don't have a cup in your hand. So loot is a way to have a cup in your hand and to have a little bit more energy. It allows you to compete with the drinkers, let's say. You, know, <laughs> you, know, you can get out of your normal being and into something more. I mean, it's cannabis-based. It's Delta-8, Delta-9, CBG, I think is the magic sauce. I don't know if you consume cannabis, but I know when I was uh, more sick and injured and earlier on in my journey, I, I consumed it for pain management. I think it's fantastic for that. As time goes on, I, I only consume it on special occasions, really, kind of pretty rarely. For where people are in traumas and they need something. And if you're pulling out alcohol and replacing it with nothing, mm-hmm. that's a really tough ask. So loot is great for that. Loot uh, is also what got me off of all pharma, by the way. I took a teeny little sip, like a, about, like a swaller, as we call it in the mountains, like a maybe a teaspoonish for about seven months. And then I didn't take it anymore. And I was like, I'm totally off of all pharma. Yeah, you know, one thing about cannabis is that you don't have to take it to the level where you get high or sophisticated or or buzzed, whatever you want to say. If you can play with that line of just below that, you can get the anti-inflammatory properties of it, just a little bit of anxiety reduction. And I think that's where it used to be. What happened is people got a hold of it when it was made illegal and uh, bred out the medicinal properties and boosted the THC. And the real land races are about 50% CBD, 50% THC. And you can smoke, drink, and enjoy that stuff without feeling like you're on drugs. You know, and, and that's the way to put, you know, it's been GMO'd into a drug, really, and away from a medicine. So it is medicine. The next, the, I'm going to have two products one's not quite out yet that's a cbg base which does not get you sophisticated or high in any in any way it's just a huge anti-inflammatory and it gives you energy kind of like a coffee but without the extra anxiety so I'm, i'm really looking forward to getting that one out because i believe in that state of being more than being stony or Mm -hmm. you know i um but but also i I recognize that if I have a headache or body aches or it would be, you know, it's counterproductive to grab a Tylenol, a leave or an ibuprofen. Grabbing cannabis in those situations really is the best choice, I believe. So oh, that's, why I can... called, that's why it's called elixir.life because it is really an elixir. You just have to find your dose. And, you know, rather than biting an ear off of a gummy bear, or, you know, a leg off of, uh, or, or ha- eating half of a worm, or... Gummies, like, he's talking edibles. And it's inconsistent loot. You, you find where your dose is, whether it's half a teaspoon, teaspoon, half ounce, one ounce, whatever it is, and it's repeatable, then it gives you the same effect. So, you know, it's... If I'm it's, having an asthma attack, like full-blown, I'm going to go to the hospital asthma attack, and I take a, a big swaller doesn't even have to be that big but if i take you know like a, a shot of loot it takes about eight minutes and i'm out of the asthma attack yeah, so i, I, see, really I see this nice. as like this is my medicine and it's expensive mm-hmm. but it saved me so much money 
Because I was paying three hundred and fifty dollars a month in asthma meds. It's you know it's expensive, but you know, when you're con comparing it to something that holds five doses, you know there's I I, I think there's a hundred doses in every bottle. I have it labeled as fifty, but that's just because I don't want a cannabis head to have the marked dose and be like this didn't do anything. I'm not you know so at mm -hmm. least you know at the double dose or fifty dose rating, they'll feel something you know. When you consider a hundred doses, it's like two dollars a dose. That's affordable. Amazing. So, you know, but yeah, the bottle I, I agree is expensive. As far as the regenerate, because you were asking about the ingredients: astragalus, ashwagandha, rhodiola, GABA, L-theanine, benfotamine, and then a lot of blood flow boosters: your niacin, your flush-free niacin, citrulline malate. I'm missing a few. It is Mac. a yeah, NAC. Well, that's the other thing because it's designed to get you off alcohol. So there's a lot of liver boosters. So a ton of milk thistle, ton of NAC, a sorbyl palmitate, which is a special vitamin C that's bonded with a fat, because regular vitamin C is very tough to absorb. So that sorbyl palmitate, so it really boosts the vitamin C in the body. And I mean, if you've ever seen somebody sick take a massive dose of vitamin C, it will brighten their eyes. Of course, those massive doses of vitamin C also come with gastrointestinal discomfort, discomfort where sorbyl palmitate does not because you don't have to, the, the absorption is so high, regular vitamin C, most of it just passes through you. Um, yeah, so it's designed to make the alcohol or benzodiazepine brain or anxious mind settle down. And liver is a big part of that, gallbladder is a big part of that, which sounds like you know, Michael. It's, it smells like my mom's house in the 70s. Thank you. <laughs> this, there's no, uh, there's nothing to help the flavor because I believe that a lot of that stuff is bad for you. And if you've been drinking, your liver is overtaxed already. So I didn't want to put anything in there that would also tax the liver. It's designed, you know, this, the body needs to know it's safe. We can start processing these toxins and get them out, not... We're putting more toxins in, hold all the toxins because there's more toxins coming. So there's nothing in it to make it taste good. Uh, <laughs> I recommend that, it, that it's done as a shot. Then, of course, you do get about 15 minutes of flushing because the only way to get GABA into the brain where it needs to be is to improve blood flow. It's very difficult to get GABA in the brain. And that's why so many people are deficient in it. And that's why so many people are anxious, is a deficiency in GABA. So uh, and after 15 minutes of a flush, about five minutes after that, you'll feel a wave of calm come over you. And I think also mental clarity. It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's not like I think I feel something. It's you feel something. Oh, yeah. And you're, I'm already starting to feel it. I'm going to turn red here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, you do just, flush just, for 15 I just, minutes. I just took like a two two tea, teaspoons. <laughs> that's a double dose. I, that's, <laughs> I recommend that, but it works. The more you take, <clears throat> the more calm you get. Oh, and a ton of magnesium are in it as well. So it yeah. might be something that you, you know, I'll bring you some. You should maybe yeah. with your own clients, you know what I mean? You never know. Yeah. It's like a... It's great. I was just on this morning with a lady who's going into rehab and she's she has it with her. Yeah. And she's going straight into the and, rehab and the world. Other, the other gateway drug, if you will, to regenerate is it really knocks out hangovers as well. Uh, so even people that are, you know, aren't ready to quit alcohol, you know, they, they can use that to make their next day brighter. I use it for tech issues. You know, in the class that we're in, Michael, where I'm at the AI, all that tech stuff, I just stresses me. I'm like, oh, God. Or when it doesn't work or like, you know, you mm. built the website and whatever, like whatever tech issues you have. Now it's like a, a joke. And actually my favorite comment that has come in from Regenerate uh, that somebody else noticed, she's like, oh, I take Regenerate before I have to fix my printer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like... That's interesting. Okay. I understand because it's just like calm. I'm not gonna freak out. I'm not gonna throw right. the printer into the pool. I'm gonna right. just sit here and breathe. It's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. 
I have, to, I have to build techie sites. I have to. I have to work in code. I'm gonna. Right. I'm gonna take some regen. Yeah. I, I appreciate you, and you're like. That's why I see you like as a master chef. You're like the supplement chef dude. And I went and like you know you study all these ingredients. Some people don't. Some people do. And you see the price of them. And if you mixed it all yourself, it's a. It's way expensive. You don't know how to do it. And and this ends up being like two dollars a serving. Mm -hmm. And it's um it saves me so much money. The craziest thing is I used to be a wino a little bit like you know especially when i'm dealing with the unions in hollywood mm. i drink wine but ever since my very first dose of regenerate i have not purchased a bottle of wine it it, it really does give i really haven't it fills the gaps in the brain that makes the brain chant for alcohol it really does or benzos because that's the same area of the mm. brain and it's also so we're also so programmed too to be like especially hello i don't know if you've had to deal with the unions but like hollywood in general is a painful but I've been, i'm like eight years into union paperwork and it stresses me out and we and we are we are told you know taught that oh just have a drink have the one and i believe me i have i mm -hmm. i see a certain person's email from screen actors guild and i'm like i, I start like <laughs> I'm like, oh god! I would just be popping the bottle and just starting, and now I I I do a shot of regenerate. So thank you, Sean. You're Saves welcome. me lots of money in the wine. And did you do? Did you investigate? How did you come up with this concoction? Pulling ingredient by ingredient, and just putting them together. Or what was your? So process? the original pre precipice was a uh, ex girlfriend of mine, well current girlfriend at the time. I I didn't even know what a benzodiazepine was. And uh, so I didn't, I mean, I just knew she was taking some pills from her doctor and then she was becoming a lunatic, you know, <laughs> what's going on here? And uh, uh, read about benzodiazepines and I'm like, oh God, it like smashes GABA in the brain. It just, just depletes the brain of GABA. And then what does GABA do? GABA puts the brakes on information transmitting from neuron to neuron. So when you think about it, it's like, well... I want information to travel fast, right? Between neuron to neuron. But there again, hold on. I only have two hands, two feet, two eyes, and ten fingers. If I'm transmitting too much information that the rest of the being can't handle, then I'm out of tune. My frequency is out of tune. So I was like, okay, so how to get GABA into the brain? Well, the next thing you read is that GABA doesn't pass the blood-brain barrier. But I've already read enough about that from Western medicine to know that Western medicine is absolutely filled to the brim with lies. So then, you know, started reading about the theory of, of how GABA gets into the brain through food and vagus nerve transport uh, and that gut microbiome plays a role. I've been researching supplements since the late 90s. The original precipice of it was all of my buddies were doing steroids and getting huge in the gym and I wasn't ready to do that, didn't want to do that. So I was like, let me see what I can do supplement wise. And that's how I stumbled on the liver pills way back in the day too, because that was from old school 1950s, 40s bodybuilders. Their thing was milk, eggs, and liver. Milk, eggs, liver. So at any rate, so lots of supplemental studies and I knew about a lot of different ways to boost blood flow. You know, niacin's fantastic at it. I mean, it literally will double the width of your blood vessels at your extremities, so near your skin. That's why you flush, because it's doubling the diameter of blood vessels near your skin. A lot of lymphatics flow near the skin. A lot of nerves. When you double the diameter of blood vessels, you're improving nerve supply. And if GABA rides the vagus nerve, up to the brain if that's actually what transmits and let's boost this you know this blood flow and fluid flow and see what happens i mean it worked on her it was five ingredients set in 2019 and then during the pandemic i tinkered with it more on myself and added more things that i thought were beneficial and you know the line that i that i'm on the more effective it is is with the more blood flow boosters but the more blood flow boosters, the more tingling, itchy, mm, and I feel it right now. that you get. So 
you know, I, the, what I've, where I've been at for a while is how, how much heat, how much tingle can people handle? Because the more of that they can handle, the more calm that they'll get. So, so I, I feel like I'm, I'm on it. I'm on a workable. This is a good one this right now. Good. But I do constantly update it. I've got um, in the V2. I'm eventually going to divide it into AM and PM. The f the next generation of it is going to have a few more vitamins because there's a handful of vitamins that people are very deficient in and supplying those vitamins will reduce anxiety. And I believe that anxiety is kind of the, the core of why people are reaching for a drink, for a smoke, for porn, for shopping addiction, for everything. It's, it's that they're not settled and they need a hit of something, sugar. They need a hit of some, they can't settle themselves, they need something to settle themselves. And the body is making them unsettled because they're like, hey, we got to get up and roll. We're missing some ingredients for this body to work right. So we got to get up and move. So here's your anxiety to get up and move. And, you know, anxiety is chemically nearly identical to excitement. So... You know, if you're in a job where you hate and, you know, you can't wait to leave work and then you get excitement, which is really developed to get you off your ass to go hunt or to go forage to find those nutrient deficiencies or to then eat to get those nutrient deficiencies out of you, it's going to manifest in really odd ways in modern society. You know, drinking, smoking, whatever you use to quell the anxiety marathons of bad TV combined with food. So yeah, the next generation is going to have a few more multivitamin stuff. Like there's some specific methylated B vitamins. It already has a bunch of B vitamins, but it, essentially I'm going to add some more. I think it works pretty well and, and it's... It makes me hot. Helps, <laughs> yeah, helps a lot of people as it is right now. And, and, it, and it's only going to get better as the generations go on. Do you see how my face is getting red? I'm at the light is on the camera. Red. On the camera, it just kind of looks like maybe more color. And the and the bottle, it does say to start off with a, qu a quarter teaspoon. Uh, I just did two. <laughs> right. yeah. I go all in. <laughs> I, I think I'm, I mean I'm 200 pounds, six foot two, and I think one teaspoon uh, is is great for me. One heaping teaspoon is great for me. And then if I'm taking it every day, if I'm going through some kind of stressful event, I have to slowly escalate it. But I usually don't go to two teaspoons, but I mean, I would. I mean, I, I've done it to the level of, you know, because I wanted to test it out, of much higher than probably anyone has. <laughs> the only negative is, is north of three, north of a tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, you can, it can actually take your breath away when you're a very higher dose so you have to like remember to breathe but that's from the knives and knives and will do that it's just too much it's at some point you cross a line of too much knives and where it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. but there's nothing toxic in it it's just too much heat is the the overdose possibility yeah that sounds cool man it sounds terrific i'd love to give it a give it a whirl i love exploring new things yeah. and cutting edge stuff and it sounds like you really you really souped it up, man. That's great. Thank you. And then I have to, I, I, I always try to bite my tongue, but I, I can't help it. How long have you been vegan? He's not, well, you're not, ve are you vegan, vegan? I mean, I've eaten, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I tend to avoid classifications because it's often based on what you're not eating, right? right. Because like, uh -huh. you don't do this. I've been eating uh, plants focus for well i mean i had a i had a I, I did a keto a strict strict keto thing for a month in the summer just to completely reverse i i continue to explore for myself and do different types of switches that yeah. and see what goes on and um and so that time it was i was eating eggs and i was eating some some goat cheese so i mean that's that's pretty recent but overall i've been focused on the plant food for for quite a few years but again going intuitively like okay what what's up right now um for me and um so yeah i i, I 
definitely, I actually had a, a good, good friend of the doctor who recently was, was talking to me about certain things, which are higher concentrations in, in fish and, and different stuff. And it's, it's more of uh, yeah, I, I definitely recognize that there's, there's a whole, there's a whole panorama out here. And so I, I do it in, in a way that just allows me to meet the moment of what I'm doing and just be, be open, be, uh, but that's been the kind of the journey, but I was resistant at first, like even in the yogic stuff, I mean, my teachers were very clear about the vegetarian approach. And I was like, yeah, but I, you know, I still, I mean, I, I simultaneously had my martial arts teacher who was a doctor of Asian medicine, Chinese medicine. And he was like, no, your body type, you gotta be eating this. So I'm, you know, exploring different things. And then one day, you know, I had, I had this great, beautiful fish that I used to always get fresh from this particular market, always the same people for years. One day I take it home fresh from that day. And I, and I had, I ate it and I'm like, wow, this, this tastes like it's off. Like it's been sitting here for days. I knew it was fresh from that day because I've been getting it for so long. And, but, and then I had the other piece, I had a different piece of fish and it also tasted very off. And then I smelled it and it smelled fine. So for me, that was a sign that my body was just saying, Stop don't this. eat that exactly so and of course we change you have different different seasons and different things are happening so i i do it in a combination of information and then intuitive and what what i require so um it's other than a, a dogma that i hold around it has to be a certain way it's more of what's serving me at the moment but go ahead what were you gonna what were you gonna share oh i was just gonna say that a, a lot of people feel great for a year two years maybe three eliminating meat and then they fall off a cliff because it's essentially your bones and your muscles and, and your body holds minerals that you get from meat and it has enough to kind of get you through for a year or two, maybe three years. And then after that, that's when the body starts to run out and then you get weakened bones, hair starts to fall out weakness because it's very hard to get all of the nutrients that you need from plants now the caveat is i think a lot of athletes can get the nutrients they need from plants because if they're consuming 5,000 calories a day of plants and they have the right blends then because of the sheer amount they're getting because it is plants have less minerals than animals because animals are made of what we are made of. So if you're getting 5,000 calories and it's you know a lot of beans, a lot of rice, so you're actually educated on how to get all of the amino acids from plants. But if you're doing it on a 2,000 calorie a day, you're going to be mineral and nutrient deficient. So just, I like uh, have Tourette's over the truth. So it's uh, <laughs> the most potent thing in meats the most potent mineral dense nutrient dense thing is <laughs> ruminant liver the cow is actually known as the best i take it in a pill because i think liver is gross i also do 75 25 burger blends because i think liver is gross but i i mean i can't tell you how many people i've turned on to liver who have been who have had medical issues have had issues and a week into eat consuming liver every day, they, they're like, I feel infinitely better and more powerful. And the other thing that I always have to mention is if you want to look at the, at the individual organism, none of us have a deep, dark tan. So none of us evolved near the equator. If we evolved near the equator, we would be much darker because we would need to filter out more of the sun because we're getting sun and strong sun constantly. So we certainly evolved four months to, to, to six months in our histories where plants don't grow. And if plants don't grow and you don't have semis and trains and planes carrying things to where you're at, you know, I'm speaking before these things existed, you were not eating plants based on your skin tone for at least four months of the year, somewhere in your ancestry. So if you wanna play with your genetics and, and compete against your genetics, the odds of winning are low. 
you turned me on to eating balls. Yeah, you know the funny thing is the the most delicious cut of cow is bison is what I and, or bison is bison. actually the testicles. They taste great. It's crazy, but it's I'll, the I'll, best I'll, burger I've ever had, honestly. Yeah, it is I the like, best yeah. burger I've ever had. And I and, and I then, love and the, saying, y'all, I eat balls. And the reason why I got into it is because it's supposed to help optimize hormones. And I'm a fervent believer in the more optimized your hormones are, then the more you are of who you are supposed to be. Because you want to be the fullest expression of yourself. And the fullest expression of you is the you with your proper hormone level. What the hormones that you can build. So I'll do a 75-25 blend. I get it pre-blended because I don't want to deal with cow balls. Yeah. I get it from North Star Bison, and it, it's like the juiciest, most flavorful burger. Um, but, you know, I, I also recognize that liver and heart is so potent, too, so I rotate liver, heart blends and testicle blends of ground beef. And then the other thing, too, is we can run on two things. We can run on carbohydrates, and we can run on fat. Somewhere along the line, we've been programmed that keto is protein. Keto is not protein. Keto is a uh, ketogenic diet is when your body is running on fats, not protein. So Adkins somehow shifted this to a high protein diet. Your liver and your body is so smart, it can convert protein into carbs like that. So if you want to be in ketogenic, in a ketogenic state, it's the, it's fat you need to eat the most fat that you possibly can. And then another thing is if you are trying to do waves of keto, like you said, you did a month of keto, really to get to max ketones, it's a three month process. So you would wanna, if you're trying to alternate, kind of getting back to, you know, being light skinned, um, where you would, you know, exist on plants, you know, or, or a lot of plants during the summer when plants are growing, you know, you could make the assumption that three, four months you would be mostly animal-based. And then that would, essentially what you're doing when you're eating high fat is you're giving your pancreas and your insulin system, your carbohydrate system, a time to rest. So then that makes all of your cells have less insulin resistance. And being metabolically flexible is key because if you can't make ketones, then every time you're out of carbs, you're going to be hangry. And every time you're out of carbs, your liver is going to be stressed to break down your own protein in your body to make carbs. Where what your body would do if you were metabolically efficient, it would start breaking down your fat. But if you haven't made ketones in forever because you eat five meals a day of plant-based, so every, you know, you're always on insulin. You get addicted to always being on insulin. So then anytime you miss a meal, you're angry, and that's the majority of people. And anytime you're angry, you're triggered. You're no longer in a parasympathetic dominant state. You're in a sympathetic dominant state. Your body is like, let's go eat. So being metabolically flexible is a really important thing. Just, you know, a couple Tourette's things, just because I heard that you were plant-based. So apologies for that. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I stay as much as I've done. I stay a student of life yeah. and I love to learn and explore and a whole much broader history. And that got me to the knowledge I have at the same time, I remain open to new stuff. Would you be open to sending me the links of some of the stuff that you mentioned? I'd, I'd be delighted to take a look. You had the, the liver yeah. products you mentioned yeah, and the bison place. Yeah, definitely. will Oh my God, we'll the bison. I'm going to get off this call and go get me some bison and, and the greatest test really is like to get those liver tabs and you want to take at least one per 10 pounds of body weight per day and just judge how you feel. The great test for people that are plant-based, I think, is to get those Beverly Ultra 40 liver tabs and do at least one per 10 pounds of body weight. One Keep in mind, 10. bodybuilders mm -hmm. are doing significantly more than <coughs> You can't get sick from eating liver. Uh, it's like 15 it's pills. Well, for me, it's 20, 21. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're saying take 15 no. of those a day? 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's where you need to be, and especially for ladies, that section of the month where they're bleeding, I would do even more, because liver has the perfect ratio of copper and iron to build red blood cells, and it does help everyone build more red blood cells. But ladies, for that window of time, really have a desperate need. This is why the majority of women are anemic, because we're programming them to be vegan and then they're not building enough red blood cells so they can't transport oxygen well. And if you can't transport oxygen well, that is the fastest way to get into fight or flight. If your body thinks that you are low on breath, it will be triggered to the max. Try to hold your breath. See how fast it is before you get into a panic. Not long. So if you don't have enough red blood cells, your line, your wedge between panic and not panic gets shorter. Well, and also the women are drinking a lot of coffee, they're drinking yeah. wine, and they're mm -hmm. they're eating a lot of carbs. Right, right, yeah, exactly. And and but and they're mineral deficient. They're not calorie deficient. Well, some of them are, but. Uh, well, your but big thing with deficient. your your main mineral deficient thing that was what you told me when we first met of put salt in your water and then put trace mineral minerals and stuff. Just that started mm -hmm. changing everything. And also, nobody tells us this. Who put said it, salt, put salt in stuff? What you supposed? You're, we're told to stay away from all the salt and the fat and. The salt has been vilified, just like eggs have been vilified, just like meat has been vilified, and I think, when you really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, it's to weaken us to be so that we can be more docile and more controlled. I mean, the sugar lobby played a huge role in our food pyramid. You know, the pr big processed food manufacturers, Kellogg's Corn Flakes were designed to reduce testosterone in males. That was the goal of the guy that made Kellogg's Corn Flakes. So it's pretty wild, but th this is where we're at. And, you know, in 2018, they came out and silently, without any fanfare, said eggs were good again. And, you know, cholesterol is a scam, too. They say that high cholesterol means heart disease. No, no. Cholesterol is what fixes heart disease. High sugar in the bloodstream is like razor blades in your arteries. Yeah. And so then if you have high cholesterol, that means that the body has the material, the spackle, to put on the arteries to fix them. So it's your body's intelligent response to your high sugar. If you get rid of the sugar, the arteries will then have a chance to heal and you won't constantly put more spackle because cholesterol is how you make all of your hormones and how you heal the body. So if you have low cholesterol, you have low healing and low hormones. And this is why women will have, you know, unpredictable cycles. And then you start... Hormones are off. Right. And then we're told take the high cholesterol pills. And also the same thing as the, the heartburn, which you helped Michael Ricks on another show. He literally, the, my friend had a heart, really bad heartburn and Sean changed his life in with one bottle. Yeah, I gave him like a bottle like, of it. Heartburn is caused by low pH stomach acid. So the body is trying to raise the pH so it keeps making more. But if the body doesn't have the minerals to make strong acid, it keeps making more weak acid, more weak acid, but the pH is still too low, so it keeps trying to make more until you're filled up with acid into your esophagus. Now you have heartburn. So then the prescription from the doctor is to turn off the acid pump or the Tums to lower the pH of the acid. And then that makes the body want to make more acid, which means unless you're taking the Tums, you have heartburn. Well, now they have a client for life, but, but now as that pH gets worse and worse in the body, more food is impacted into the intestines. <clears throat> and then the more food that's impacted into there, the less regular the defecation is. Now you've got a system that's backed up all the way. And now you're literally very sick. I can't tell you how many people I've helped just by giving them uh, betadine and pepsin which raises the pH of your stomach acid, which gets more nutrients out of your food. So even if you don't change what food you eat, you'll get more nutrients out of the food that you do eat from the yeah. higher acid. And then your body has a chance to make 
better acid. And then you can watch somebody that has to take six, seven pills to get their acid up. Then it's four, then it's three, then it's two, then it's none. So, you know, it, it's And really, then you're just fixed. It's right, not about but Nick getting another bottle and stuff. It's like my right. friend Michael is just gone now. And it was like a year's right. issue. I'm like, oh. But the right. meds would be like a trick. It's like the lies were told. You know, it goes back to everything. It goes back to getting men to watch and, football, too. And yeah. the body will turn off its acid pump under stress. So it will destroy the stomach gastric juices because it thinks that it's preparing for battle or war. Or, or so, it, it, so it can be stress-induced. So just by raising that pH with the betadine and pepsin, one can feel a lot better. I mean, I, I take it a lot, and I take a gallbladder supplement because I know that's where frustration and anger and everything is stored. So I want to have all of that moving well. Um, so I take that often before meals. Anytime I'm going to have like a big meal, if I'm going out to eat, I try to bring those digestive enzymes mm. just to get that stomach acid higher, to micronize the food more, to get more nutrients out of it. Mm. Yeah, I started in, that was my first love was health and nutrition and worked with, uh, even interned in high school with different different holistic doctors and was getting an early introduction and experimented with a lot of things. It's such an amazing, expansive world. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have, um, you know, to get to the place I've, I've consistently felt good for a long time. And I've, and so it's very rare that anything I actually do differently, um, mm -hmm. because I do so many things actually had a tangible difference. So I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to going, maybe checking out the liver thing and just like, just dropping all those a day just to see. I love it. I love the, I love that. Another thing is that the, so what, what also has really occurred to me, occurred to me naturally, but now I understand it better through our work that we do was that this, the inner work in my ability, you may find this for yourself, Sean, is the, is as I reduced my, my own anxiety and stress because of, I changed my perspective on life and recognized that, oh, this is, this is how things work. And actually my hunger or my appetite was just like, just went down and down and down. And, and my, and I, as I went into this very, I actually went into the, what I do, uh, like a frugival regimen right now, prim primarily. And I thought this isn't going to be possible to even like, I'm going to do it as a fast, like a three month, I'm going to three month cleanse because I would do other fasts and I, I, I quite lean quite lean body fat. So then it would be too much. So then I'm like, oh, I'll do an extended one. And then I realized that, uh, actually felt great. And I start pushing the envelope and saying, okay, I'll run, I'll lift, I'll let me do more and just see if this is real. If I may be just on some sort of extra hops, you know, and, and which it, diet is that? Um, you what's that? Fruit? You said you're on fruit. Yeah. So like, the, like a gorilla eats. So fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, uh, definitely a lot of fat for sure. A lot of uh, uh, coconut and, and, um, uh, avocado and things of that uh, things like that but very very similar and mm -hmm. so yeah i did it just as a as a fast as a, and then it was like wow this is astounding and then i required to eat actually less so then i went to a, a cyclic fasting regimen because i just didn't i was forcing it because i thought i needed to like put more in but then i was, I was testing myself but with all the stuff i've done i might more much more of an anomaly than the standard guy because that's just so much work I've done in myself, on myself, and reducing, just protecting my environment, doing myself. I mean, it's a multitude of things. So, but at the same time, like, all right, shifts, you know, things shift, and let's let's see what's going on. I will mention as well is that the to meet the things that a lot of the conditions that you're talking about. So we we I still recommend people do the biological side, and then I say, well, let's actually look at the actual translation. Like you just mentioned the gallbladder, and I'll give you an example of how this works. So the gallbladders do with resentment, anger, and no example, way, and frustration. So what's happening is we don't we we you know just we do the inner side of this perspective. So this woman she had a, a fried food addiction. She was eating a bag of corn chips a day. Fried food is like the fried food is what's you know, connected to the gallbladder. So, and, um, so she did some work around forgiveness in a session with somebody and moved this, this resentment around someone in her life. And it was a big shift. And so, um, a couple of weeks later, she had talked to the, 
uh, her guide, and he was like, hey, you know, so how's that, uh, how's that corn chip thing going? And she was like, oh my gosh, I've been to the, you know, she has a bunch of kids and she's at the food store every other day. She's like, I've been down the chip aisle numerous times and I didn't even see them. I nice. forgot it was just gone. And so being able to marry the, the biological with this inner work and helping people see what's going on and then get the blessing out of it. So I like to, you know, one, that's one progression for me in my path of seeing from going from like, okay, I've got to get to this neutral Zen state equanimity. Then I realized that actually all of these things are, are meant to, in my path, I get to actually continue to go. I can actually change the end of the continuum. So if I'm, if someone's going through, if I'm, someone's like, born and, and a lot of people were born in resentment and anger because maybe one of their parents didn't want to have a kid, right? I mean, it can start even in the womb and they can be carried down, but they're holding on to something. They're meant to actually, if it's big, to express the opposite. So when someone's totally trans, transmuted something, then they actually feel gratitude for it. Like absolutely like, oh my gosh, thank you for doing that thing, which I hated because now it's enabled me to evolve and and be the, the, the man or woman I, that I meant to be. Mm -hmm. So by doing that, then the conditions go away as well on there. And we like to bring the blessing forth. So married with the biology, of course, and then, but we can get, we get shifts in people just like dropping cravings and, and ma massive biological challenges quickly. As some guy who just gallbladder, again, the, this woman, who was taken to think she's only she came to us because she was at her wits end she had she was supposed to get surgery on her gallbladder she had all these health problems and she comes in within two months she went from about to have surgery to her gallbladder's fine but That's doing amazing. inner work no no we, we don't other than focus on the substance or the or the food we don't we just say hey you know line yourself up like this we're just going to do the inner side right and just focus on that and you can heal yourself because it's no longer needed. It's just an expression of the body to help you see something. It's real, but ultimately it's a soul level thing that actually gets later expressed physically. So it's like, hey, it's been a while, like let's get on, let's get on it. So then finding the blessing in it enables us to then, the, the, this, the condition, which again, serving as our bodies, it's just giving, it's a language, it's just a language. And then we look at it, it's bad, bad, all these things are bad, but no, it's just speaking. It's just that like you've ignored something for a while and it's now it's presenting itself because it's time it's time to address that so mm -hmm. by dealing with that we can get amazing shifts they get people we don't do it for them we everyone does their own stuff here we guide we, and i and i can do it inside of myself for my own stuff as well so now it now in a physical condition then becomes an invitation for me to evolve as a man as a divine man as opposed to something to like get rid of it's a new direction. It's an opening. It's like, aha, I've been ignoring this. It's time for me to address, find out what it is specifically, and then address it. And then I can, you know, my body's a beautiful thing. And we help people see that as well. So I love doing the inner, the inner piece and helping people. There's a guy who was just, he, young man still in his sixties, and he has experienced such cognitive decline that he could no longer read or buckle his belt. And within sure. one month, he's dressing himself, cooking, and he's reading books on brain trauma. Wow, cool. Just for doing the insides. Yeah. So oh, I know it well, too. I was in a wheelchair. I was at, at herniated discs. I was supposed to be a, a, have surgery and the whole thing. And a retired fireman told me about Dr. Sarno. Oh, you yeah. Know, Dr. Sarno, where, so it's like connecting that your brain is sending you the pain because you're mad. And as soon as you can tell your brain that, yeah, I'm, I'm enraged. But you got to pinpoint when you hurt the back, how wh where it was connected emotionally, and what happened, mm -hmm. and what made you mad, like that, and oh. just say it. I mean, literally, it was like I'm mad at that, and I never, I lost my house to Madoff. I'm one of the Madoff victims indirectly because it was my my investor had had invested in Madoff, and I was about to do this big deal, and um, he shot himself. And that affected me and my deal and my whole work. And so I ended up indirectly, it created a whole vicious spiral and I ended up losing my house and the whole thing. But, and that was what, that's what it was. I was enraged by that. And I ended up in a herniated discs in a wheelchair. And as soon as I connected the anger 
and basically said, "I'm, you know what? I am actually really pissed off. The my my pain went away so incredibly fast." And then the the funny thing about that is the herniated disc didn't go away fast because they don't. Exactly. It, 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 the difference between somebody who's walking around with herniated discs and playing athletics, and the one that isn't, is nervous system tolerance. Ooh. It's, that's the difference. And and which nervous system you're in as well. Yeah, it's really interesting the the study of that stuff. And then over time, of course, you can make it so your discs are not herniated, but that doesn't go away fast. But the nervous <laughs> no, tolerance can go up really fast. And the x-rays can make you cry when you look at it and you look and you're like, oh, somebody hurt you when you were a baby. You know? Yeah. And it's like that. And you can look at it and you can tell yourself in your brain, oh, well, the x-rays say that I should be in so much pain. Mm -hmm. So a better, you know, so it's, again, the mindset thing, too. Oh, and, and we, we are ultimately a bunch of light particles bouncing around and our ability to create spontaneous shifts in how we, in what happens is also very possible. And we've had people who, I mean, like Dispenza, you mentioned Dispenza and him talking about his whole shattering and then was weeks before, only weeks before he's back on that bike. Seeing that's possible, I, I like to lean into that part. It's like, okay, this is just light particles moving around through empty space. So I can realign myself working, doing the inner, especially dropping into the motions and, and the blessings, and then really reversing that to be able to shift, to shift my body as well. And we have, I mean, even one woman who got it, we had the body electronics thing that I mentioned. She, she was in there and she walked in, she couldn't even raise, she could just put her hands in her pockets because her shoulders were so frozen. Mm -hmm. And even within a day and a half, she could raise them above her head. And well, you know, technically what's, you know, what's the deal? What's the, like, there's some inflammation or something going on, but now you can change that as well. And being, we had one woman who my business partner has a lot of stories because he's been doing them for years and years and years before I started doing them here. And I mean, people who's had rods in their leg from some surgery just disappeared. Mm. Wow. You're talking about the metal is gone from their the leg? Metal's gone. Weird. That's very odd. That's wow. Weird. I've okay. heard of people that have healed themselves to the point where they're like, I don't need this rod anymore, and they'll have it removed. Uh, I've mm -hmm. heard of that, but I haven't heard of somebody's body reconsuming the the, the, the metal. Wow. I'm sure, I'm sure. sure that's easily or documented if they have an X-ray. But yeah, that's that's pretty wild. I had uh, I healed myself. I didn't realize what I was doing. It was more incidental. But I, I was told uh, I'd love to run, and I had an injury that was kind of weird. It just kind of came out. It just suddenly I was, it just, my knee wasn't stable. I was doing dance at the time. I was in LA, I was doing contemporary stuff. And I was like, all of a sudden my knee would just, just, it just I'm like, what the heck is this? So I went to the doctor and he's like, oh, you're never going to run again. This is it. You're done. You're never going to run again. Torn and ACL was, or something. I was like crushed. And so I just took that as, you know, it was very, it was also getting painful to do. I couldn't do couldn't do it, but I, that stability was all. So I just kind of like said, okay, fine. And for a couple of years, I what was it a couple of years, maybe a year. She doesn't know how long it was, but it was a while. And I kind of considered that was what the deal was going to be. You know, my dad ran, he taught me to run. He, he had, uh, his running days were done and he had had surgery. But anyway, I run into this, this someone who is really into this one particular pathway. And I was, she gave me a book and I read it and it was really talking about the power of forgiveness, like a daily forgiveness, like a regular practice. So I thought, okay, you know what? I might as well add that. I had a special forgiveness thing that I do that has worked before. I might as well just do this as a practice. I'll tack it on to my two hours at the very end. I'll just do this. And I started doing it just for that, just because I thought it was cool. And I, and I had some beneficial energetic feeling experiences with that. So anyway, I was doing that. And a friend of mine calls me, he's like, Hey, let's go for, let's go for a run in the Canyon. And that's pretty hilly. And I'm thinking run and hills are it's mountainous. I'm like, dude, I, you know, this isn't something I'm able to do. He's like, I don't worry. You know, my knees, I hurt my knees playing football and stuff. So I just gonna, I just trot. It's just more fun than, you know, walking. It's just something different. I said, I'll walk, we'll trot together or whatever. So I go to this mountain and I'm like, I trot this thing. And I think, oh, it's really that hard. Two weeks later, I'm running up the mountain. Literally running, I'm running this whole this exactly up and down, 
and down I was a little bit easier just because I was concerned about the knees, but I could, I could, it was like, wait a minute, I couldn't even do this. And then I, then I figured out later, um, I figured out there's something connected. It took me some time, but in the work that we do, so the knees are related to various things. And one of the knees things related to is, is forgiveness, hmm. partnership and forgiveness and moving forward some of the translations, but I'm like, oh, I healed myself through forgiveness. <laughs> I didn't even know I did it. So if we that's can, really you know, cool. we can rearrange stuff. Everything can be rearranged, you know, because that's we're just light. In the end. And also, we change every seven years, right, Sean? On a New cellular year. level, sure. Now we're consistently yeah. regenerating. The oldest part of all of us is seven years old. Mm -hmm. So it's really our organism is as healthy as we have been mentally and physically over the past seven years, because your oldest piece of bone is at most seven years old. That's Other crazy. things regenerate faster, you know, skins really fast. So then mm -hmm. really we shouldn't hold on to anything. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, you, it, you, you don't have to, but if it's, it's just replicating the pattern. So it's like, you know, it's just continuing. It's, it's like saying it's firing and saying, well, you think that like, oh, oh right. I perceive this to be an injury here. And so it's just going to continue to replicate in a way that keeps this, the, the state the same. But until you, when you change the perception around that, you do something around that and you shift it, then, um, then it can regenerate very, very quickly. Or, or you get, obviously you can accelerate it with the biological side and then you can move it forward compared to somebody who's not doing that, but then you can do the inner work and accelerate that. But ultimately the thing is too, is it's all, I mean, even things that stick around and you do the, you know, we do the kind of work that we're doing around it and it persists. It's also a blessing. It's not that we get away from this idea of like, well, you didn't do it. It's like, well, there's maybe more. And like certain issues maybe are just important for your path and it's gonna, they're gonna linger or they're gonna come back. It just means there's a little bit more to do. There's a little bit more to do. Things come around again. Okay, cool. Let's dive in deeper, dive in deeper, get more blessings out of it. So, but yeah, instantaneous, miraculous. This woman healed a cat. She was supposed to go in to get a cavity removed. She went, she did some, some work around that. She went in, the dentist is like, took the x-ray again to just be sure he knew everything was. It's like, it's gone. That's cool. I love stories yeah. like that. Yeah. So we can, we can, we're all capable of, of that uh, regeneration, restoration, change, healing. And it's just so many, it's, it's, it's fascinating what's really going on and to continue to get greater and greater levels of clarity on that. Super. And one of the things is you don't heal at all if you're in fight or flight. So that's big, you know, yeah. talking about some of this emotional stuff in healing and then your knee heals is because your body isn't trying to heal if it's in a uh, sympathetic dominant state oh yeah nervous system is huge i mean nothing's when simple and survival not a lot's happening <laughs> not a lot's going on <laughs> except more more survival so. i know that world well it's nice <laughs> to like it's nice and I've, i'm living testimony too that I've, I've gotten and i've witnessed other people they do have you know like you said you've seen it too it's like it's really fun anyway i think the three of us will do some good out in the world yeah this is a great jam for... we've done the joe rogan three hours y'all <laughs> oh, that's cool it went by fast so i know well it's yeah. like it's an engaging conversation this is what mm -hmm. th i want to witness this i want to sit there and watch you two talk you know what i mean and i, and I want more i want to find more of you as i feel as i find more i like want to introduce you to i think you guys should like this guy jacob that i like a lot I personally have been, just to sum it up and like what, what my intention was, me personally, my own world, is I just started paying attention to the men who were ahead of me, like way ahead of me. Like you got your finances on, you got your relationship on, you got your body on, you got your, you know, you're living your best life. I want to know what the hell are you doing with your time? What are you eating? And what's your spiritual work? And because they're doing it because the, and i'm like because uh, a it's like people that and I, I hate to be you know i'm not objectifying you but it's dudes i would do you know what i'm saying i'm not talking to some dude i wouldn't do those are the guys that i wanted like what are you doing because i'm i'm way ahead, i'm way behind you compared if you knew what the hell the hell that i climbed out of out of a wheelchair and domestic violence and child sexual abuse and i'm like i got the whole excel spreadsheet going so i'm like and i want to keep elevating and I'm, I started paying attention to the men who were doing it and also running businesses. You know, you're also going out on. I'm like, how do you shit, shower and shave? 
Like, what does your actual day look like? How do you actually do that? And it's been a couple of years that I've been paying attention and it is three to six hours a day on body, mind and spirit maintenance. And in the world, we call it self-care and self-love and all that and stuff. But I, I, for me, I don't think like that. I guess I've, I've been told so many times, you know, you think like a dude. You're such a dude. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm paying attention. And it's like, it's, it's more body, mind, spirit, maintenance. It's three to six hours on a heavy day. Like if you have a yoga or if you're going to the higher varic chamber or whatever the hell you, that's like a six hour day, but it's a, and you said it, I took a note. You said about two and a half hour meditation you were working on. So that, that, that applies to the three hours a day. Then you do your walk or your yoga or your time on yourself. And the difference between y'all and the ladies is that you are doing it non-negotiable. You have a hard line that that is your, and you even said it, even in dating, you're like, you have a hard line. I'm not, I'm not going to stand for crazy. I'm not going to put up with crazy because I have my, because you might not know that you're doing it. I've just been paying attention and it's about three to six hours that you have non-negotiable where you're really looking after your own body, mind, and spirit. And that is what us women over here in my court are not doing. I would say like an hour and a half to six <laughs> not three to six, but an hour and a half <laughs> to, to, to six. But yeah, I can. I, I yeah. have lived in your presence. I paid attention to you and I make, I pay attention to your calendar oh, yeah. and I will argue with you on that. <laughs> no, occasionally it can go to six. Occasionally yeah. it can go to six, yeah. but it's three. Cause if you yeah. take in, if, even if you take in a bike ride, a walk in the morning, walk in the afternoon, the time you spend to eat and take care of your body that you actually sit there and cook and steak and you eat it like that. All of that is in your three hours. This yeah. is taking care of your body, mind, spirit. I mean, there's a meditation there. You're sitting in a sauna. You're sitting. And, and what we ladies over here have, and I'm speaking for myself, the mistake we have made is putting everybody else before that and not at putting ours non-negotiable for ourselves. Well, and then dropping yourselves into the victim. Yeah. And then I can't, I'm in fan, panic mode. So what I've been doing, because I have a vagina and I'm a multitasker, I've been layering up those three to six hours. So like, okay, I'm like, I have, to, I put it on my schedule. I was like, I'm going to do what the men are doing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to copy y'all three to six hours. What am I? Okay. I got my meditation on, but then I also do clean. I love cleaning and it's actually my service work. So I'll do my meditation while I clean. So then I've, I've gotten towards my three hours. You see what I did just there? And then, yeah. I'll, or I'll, or I'll listen to a podcast while I walk, go on an hour walk, or I'll, you know, do a phone call. While I, so I got in my, app, you know, so that's what I've been, I personally have been doing and damn, if it's not working, thank you. So, and it got it out of like, sis, what is it? I always get confused with the nervous systems because they trick us with the words because sympathetic, sympathetic sounds like you would want it just like right. socialism. It's got social in it. It's like social media. I got a social media account. I like it. Yeah, yeah, sympathetic. And you're like, no, that's not, that's not what that means. So so you only want to be in sympathetic if there's a bear or a right. lion. Right, well, I believe many bear. of us ladies live in that. Yes, that is true. That has been my experience. Yeah, and me, but, not, it, but, it's, not but it's because of the pollution for, that they get in their eyes, through their skin, through their fork. Exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Through Disney. <laughs> no no yeah, shit, right it's, it's just conversations like this that you know and stuff that you're doing that has to get the word out because well, we need the ladies to come <laughs> don't we all don't we for sure and lead the, i have another podcast that talks about that <laughs> anyway uh but but my intention and the reason i, I am uh, to be full disclosure i know you're not supposed to tell your uh, secrets but the my what i'm doing out there is is elevating people's joy so that they can get over all the trauma so that you can be a warrior in your life because the real perpetrators that are doing all this that are poisoning the food the poisoning the, the soil that are poisoning the you know it goes back to my science fair project when i was 12 i'll give you a brief thing michael i know i'm a broken record about it when i was 12 i did the science fair project that showed what they put in our food that doesn't need to be there gets makes you sick and then you go to the doctor and then the, get you put on a series of meds for the rest of your life and you're either going to have whatever issue forever or you die. And I showed like how it, it, how it worked. But my, my project was showing that the people that give you the medicine are the same people who put the poison in your food. 
So yes. you're like you're literally walking into a box, and I and I, this was my at twelve. Nice. This was this was my presentation, and I was like, yeah. the way to see that is you got to avoid the box, and yeah. that you can apply that to everything, family court, Hollywood issues, all the system, every single freaking system, and I've been in all of them because there's a reason why I, my whole life has been a kaleidoscope. And they're like, what are you really doing? I'm like, I, there's a piece of me everywhere, is what I just did. And every single system, when you dissect it and when you really do the system analysis, the bad guy who's poisoning us is also raping kids. Yeah, you know, the, yeah, the Epstein, Epstein list is out. And... But it's like, a, it's like a devil. I mean, it's a, it's a de they don't believe in God. They don't believe that. And, and it is like a it's a dark, dark thing. And that's the bad guy. And, and the bad guy is very organized. And so the only way to fight that bad guy in my book is to get your God on, turn it up, turn it up to 11, you know, and, yeah. and find the good men, heal the good men. So you like, we actually can do something. Yeah. Well, you know, it's important to remember that a thousand AD, the majority of Europe was pagan. The majority of bankers come from the European banking system. So, you know, it's not surprising if you know that. So. Well, I think what, from what I've, I've uh, got tuned into the really, I think that these spaces that where they're actually worshiping demons, it's having met some people who have been in those rituals kind of sparked Ooh. my curiosity to take it a little bit more literally as opposed to figuratively. And I believe that, I think that there were people who were pagan, but I, I also believe that there were and are still a huge amount of those people in the biblical times who were giving their kids, burning their kids and the first kids in the fire, um, that never stopped. And I think that's, I think ultimately that's where those people are coming from. I think that's the only way to explain the atrocities continuing to happen is that actually they're doing them to feed their, I mean, to, to feed their own God, be it Satan or some demon or Moloch or Baal or, or whoever, but they're doing it with vigor. And, and like they're doing these ceremonies kind of like uh, to get power. Yeah. Like in like the movies, they're actually getting no, no, yeah. like in the old thinking, but never really went away. And it's built, we have an anti-life society. So if we're going to distill it down, we could just say life, God is life. Life is in all, torches in all. And there's death or anti-life. So everything is anti, anti, going after the kids, going after us, going after love, going after truth is anti, it's all anti-life. So they're, they have an agenda. It's not nothing. The gen it's not it's more than control and power it's the anti-life agenda and that's what shows up across the yes. board and when we look at it that way it's like oh now i can see why they would do this because they actually they're actually doing their own celebration here of their religion of satanism basically yeah uh, the opposition of what is and now that makes sense it's like of course they, of course they would do that sort of stuff they think it's great and then they're of course looking they would at get into else government involved. Yeah, of course they would get into government and poison your food. So, okay, so all three of us are aware of this. Sean's big goal is to get people sober, which is also true. Instead of it's at the fall of Rome, the worst place to be is drunk in the Colosseum, right? Who's that? That was I just heard that the other day. Like, don't be drunk in the Colosseum, like be a warrior in it. And what does that mean? Like for me, it's like funny. I'm very very funny with heavy, heavy stuff. So yeah. you can send me in. I mean, I'm actually going to go and like tell this guy's family that he's dying for him. Like, like this, so like, I, and also like I tend, my events are very funny, but I'm talking about like horrible things and, and that I'm helping survivors heal because I think it's like, there's more survivors than there are perpetrators. It's just, they're stuck in victimhood. And when you switch, when you shift a survivor, there is nothing. There's no warrior that's anybody like a. Well, you've seen them. Well, the, you've that's seen the battle, them. though. That's I was saying that earlier. The battle is to keep us in a sympathetic, dominant state because then we're easy to control. We're yeah. like the we're like the sheep that as soon as they're startled, they all run right for the pens. You know. No that, shit. And and so that is the battle right there, and then the people that you know, exist in a sympathetic dominant state, uh, they're not feeling any feelings. So then they're able to do this, you know, psychotic stuff. 
Um, so they're coming from trauma too. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. And then they're not feeling it at all. So, you know, and there's a part of me that, I mean, I know this stuff. This is also part of why I was laying on the floor, drinking a bottle of wine, mm-hmm. you know? And now I'm like, well, thanks to regenerate and loot. <laughs> it's like, we have to like warrior up. It's actually like shifting my own brain. As far as like, if you give me like, Hey Michael, this is my session. Like shifting my own brain from fear. I guess that is the sympathetic dominant. Yeah. You're in like fear. To, to be like, and you're in like, you're escaping domestic violence. You've already been through your own trauma. You know, you're in poverty also. Like, so it's, and then you got robbed. And then you get, so I'm not, I'm speaking for a lot of people here. Just, but, and, fiat, but, and fiat currency promotes poverty. Exactly. So, That's what the bankers use it. So how to shift my own brain and myself be an example for others who are like me that are coming back behind me. Like I've been watching the guys that are further ahead than me so that I can like, all right, all right, I'm, I'm alive. I'm kicking, but man, I'm holding on. And I'm, but I swear to God, I, I can, I can do some aerial dancing. Like I can, I can fly around this room and like, you know, I did it with one leg cause I was in a, anyway, but, I tore my ACL dance into Leonard Skinner, Michael. So if that doesn't just tell you how I love electric guitar, I don't know what does. Anyway, my point is using myself as an example. I have been laying on the floor drinking also because I'm completely bamboozled and mortified by the truth. It's like too daunting. And then I'm also very, very aware and a witness to the miracles and the magic. So I don't, at this point, I'm like, I don't really have the fear because I don't even believe anymore. It's like, I know. I know the truth. I've seen it. Like, I've seen the miracles. So how can I be, like, bigger, wider? It's kind of like, how do you get, same conversation. How do you get your work? How do you get Sean's Regenerate? How do you get, like, my, me on stage more? Like, a, I'm a magic button for survivors. Like I can take it and it like that day, that instantly, it's like, like something happens and they're like, they go from zombie, like poisoned into like little warrior. I've seen it a lot. It's harder in the women, the twenties and thirties for the whole conversation in itself. But my point is for all three of us using myself as an example in my own, like kind of therapy (laughs) session with the two of you is I'm badass. I am bad. I'm, I have a whole history in the fashion world. I've raised millions of dollars. I've had millions of dollars, but, but I also have this super rebel side that I don't give a crap about any of that. So I'm like, and I can, I'm happiest barefoot camping with a tomahawk ribeye. And that's where I want to live. But I'm like, I'm powerful as speaker and my mission in life, like the roomy poem of like, you're not fulfilling your life unless you're like living your purpose for real is a speaker is a teacher is out there i have been in my own traumas of just getting out of hell and also daunted by the truth daunted by the truth of like oh fuck oh shit you know that i'd love to hear your opinion on this michael but i think what it is again is nervous system control so you're in a okay you're in a creative flow when you're in front of an audience speaking the truth you want to know how to be in that more often it's just like the printer you know if if you're in a in a in the wrong nervous system when you're dealing with the computer work and you're dealing with the printer and you're dealing with the day-to-day if you're triggered and you're not in your power then that's preventing you from spending more time in your power because if you spend more time in your power then you'd be doing more speaking and more of the things that you love to do right but that's True. the thing. It's, that's, the, that's what we're at. The balance. The, there's a vested interest for the people in power to get us out of our creative flow, get us out of our being when we're in our presence. So that's why there's fiat money. That's why most foods are poison. That you know that we're being poisoned from every possible angle because people in power that are doing inappropriate things know deep down that they're doing inappropriate things and if everybody yeah. knew they would be ousted so they're, they're 
you know. And so that well, now you bring it. But but then the hinge is is that it's potent to lie. Lying and cheating and stealing can get you ahead faster, and that's what it seems has happened with a lot of people at the top. Oh, and also it, it, and keeping you like the warriors like myself, the badasses down. Like you're, right. you know, and it's like, damn. And it's like, I, I've been through like so much. It's crazy, but I'm grateful for it, Michael, because I can show other people how to get out of it. You know, I have, I have some magic sauce and now I know you and I have some more magic sauces to share with people. I guess my, what I'm, because I can really have the conversation about the real bad guy we're dealing with. I think I have honestly been in a space where it's, uh, I need to get my like, oh yeah, fuck you. Oh yeah, watch this. You know what I mean? Because it's because there's more of us than there are of them. And I have been in a, it's too big, it's too scary. What can you even do fear? Does that make sense? Well, yeah, and that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. And, that, and that's the tinge that is so difficult. To- yeah. But it's an instant change. It has to be like a okay. Well, I'm, I'm so happy for you that you've been scared of the monster. I'm so happy. Okay, monster's still there. Right. So what are we gonna do? I mean, you inspire me, Michael, to keep my spiritual life going. I mean, oh my God, I could have write a, write a whole book about my spiritual experiences. I mean, that's why I got my tattoos. And then Sean, like helping me get my body on. And then I'm only going to translate all this to others. I guess it goes back to my science fair project, getting out of the box. It's kind of also a mind fuck. Well, it's traumatizing. It's traumatizing to know. Like getting out of the matrix and living, we are living in a new world. We have to shift into a new world because you know, and so what does that new world look like and who are we in the new world? So yeah. you, you inspire me greatly. I, I live in the middle of the seesaw. Like I, I'm like staying balanced in the middle of the seesaw. Cause it's like on one hand, Michael, I'm like, I know about that whole dark torture stuff. That scares the living shit out of me, you know? And then there's the other side that I'm like, oh, that's easy. And just, uh, that's that angel Michael stuff. It's done. So you inspire me guys. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank Best. You. <laughs> I love you. That was that was really great. I appreciate you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I really appreciate all y'all. That, it was a great conversation. Um, Thank um, you for regenerating the world. Yeah.